Welcome, everyone, to the Sickos Committee Podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of November 21st, 2023. I'll be the first to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone down in the States. I hope you're enjoying Thanksgiving. Uh, this episode, we're going to split up, I think, into different parts. I don't know if they're all going to go out as one episode or not. We'll see what happens. But we're going to talk about some Thanksgiving takes as well as talk about uh, you know, this win for bowl eligibility week, which I think is more important than some of the rivalries, rivalries in the largest quotes possible here. As always, I'm Jordan. With me tonight, I've got Kamish, Pit Girl, Beth, Joey, and Arthur on the ones and twos. Joey, last time we heard from you, you were on the field in Hamilton. Yes, I was. So I how, was. how was the Grey Cup? Uh, it was fantastic. Unironically, the best football game I've seen all year, in person or otherwise. The experience was fantastic. Again, I, I think I said it on the show, but... The CFL Media Corps were very nice in humoring me with my Sickos Committee badge. I was literally, for almost the entire game, I swear to God, I was sat next to CBC Winnipeg. Mm, nice. And every now and then she looked over at my badge and was like, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it still says that. You're one of those, you're one of those new media people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wasn't, thankfully, I wasn't the most obnoxious one in that media room because someone was filming a TikTok the whole time. That's, so, a, that's annoying as shit. You know, you know what? I it, even if I had to be the second most annoying one in there, I was cl- the bar was cleared and I was fine. Please, I, Jordan, I, media nouveau. <laughs> no, I, I no, I had I had the right term. We are a what was it? We were co- we we're, we're an autonomous media collective, yeah. powered by AI and the cloud. <laughs> Please, media solutions I, for a digital age. Yeah, please, A- AI in this case means alternative intelligence. Exactly. Uh, please, please venture capital fund us. <laughs> um, the funny thing was, I because at one point, I guess because a lot of the press was French speaking, they didn't have a ton of questions in the press conference. So I just gr- ended up with the mic and asked a question about. I think it was like I just asked Jason Maas, the Alouettes head coach, like, "Are you going to do the onside punt again?" And as I was walking out to the field, TSN was playing, and I heard my voice, and I was like, no. Ugh. Beautiful. But yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, Green Day was the halftime performer, which was very surreal. Now, J- Joey, what was your what's your first Green Day album that you remember? When did you get into Green Day? Genuinely American Idiot. Okay, that's fine. Uh, because, I, that, you would have been like two when that came out. I was seven, I think, yeah, okay. when I first listened to it. Okay, that's fine. And that was like a year or two after the fact. Mm-hmm. No, it, I, I enjoyed it my freshman year of college. <laughs> I actually, funny thing, last night just I was scrolling through YouTube just to kill time, and there was a guy doing a deep dive on all of Green Day's albums. So I was like, oh, they started in 89. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Did not know that. Yeah, they've been around for a, they've been around for a long ass time. Like, Dookie came out... When did Dookie come out? Dookie was like their fifth album. Apparently. No, I know they. Yeah, they, that, that was, was what like 1996. This is like all the people who discovered the Goo Goo Dolls in the mid 90s. <laughs> yeah, Dookie what? was 90. Dookie was 94. That, that, like that. I like I. That was even before like when I was like when I got into Green Day. It was after Dookie had been out for a long time. Um. I. I yeah. I like the American Idiot album. I. I can't listen to that song. Wake me up when September ends. Ever mm-hmm. again. It's about Maryland. Ever again. No, they. They dedicated that to uh, folks after Katrina. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, they reopened okay. the Superdome and they like played it with like U two and stuff. And I was like, I just can't. I can't hear that. And like that album like came out basically like right after Katrina hit. Right. And I mean mm-hmm. it. It was a. It was a good album. I listened to it a bunch. I just can't listen to that song anymore. The Dookie album, I did this thing, you know, because I'm the, the the senior on the podcast here. Uh, you know, got the gray hair going, you know, just for men. It feels so natural. No one can tell. I have a touch of gray on the sides. Whatever. I'm old. Yeah, that album was like I went to my first, you know, like teenage pool party and they're playing it. And I'm like, I had never heard it. And then everybody's singing it and, and like singing mm-hmm. along to it. Uh, I'm I'm the idiot. Like you know, they're listening the to idiot. that. They're they're listening to that. Yes, I'm the American idiot. Back in in '94, <laughs> they're listening to like Green Day. My 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 next door neighbor and I were uh, listening to like Dre and the Chronic, uh, which I, I believe my my parents confiscated the tape 
and I, I never <laughs> found it again. So I apologize, uh, neighbor. I I didn't lose the tape. I I guarantee you, my parents found it and threw that shit away. Yeah, that that would be a lot more. <laughs> I know it's hard. Again, young folks who listen to this podcast, I know it's hard to believe because Doctor Dre seems like this like happy elderly gentleman but he was considered one of those dangerous people in america at some point again also snoop dog who's a yeah. happy-go-lucky stoner no man like when doggy style came out people freaked out yes okay i just so, remember listening to gin and juice yes okay joey so so the game was great you were on the field at the very end how close did you get to the great cup it was actually i i haven't told anyone about this yet but there was a really weird moment while they're presenting the Grey Cup, where they had us all the media in the tunnel, and uh, the one CF the CFL and the Grey Cup committee put on a absolutely flawless performance the entire night. Everything worked perfectly. Everything worked like clockwork. I was even able to roam the stadium a little bit, and they were fine with it. The one thing that happened was they decided to put the uh, friends and family and the media through the same tunnel onto the field, and there was a wall behind us uh, to get as we entered. And friends and family had to go in first, but obviously because they're up in the stands and we were down on field level, they kind of had to shuffle in front of us. So I didn't actually get to the field until long after the presentation, but it was still really cool. I got up right up to the stage where they had it, where they had the Grey Cup. Um, I picked up some confetti and gave it to a Montreal fan in the stands. It, I was it was weird because there was like people doing media hits and stuff like and friends and family and people crying on the field and and i was just there like you didn't con- congrats you didn't, you didn't go try to interview uh <laughs> caleb evans and and ask them if he knew about the sick house committee you so I, back, I, I in the back of my head i had two things i thought about doing one was joseph zuma who is uh the owls australian punter yes but he had kind of a not great game, so I I didn't really feel like getting in his face about it. Um, and I did think about finding Caleb Evans, but genuinely I couldn't find him, even if I wanted to. And he, I probably would have chickened out before I even got close to him. <laughs> you well, just Joey, walk up I'm... to Caleb Evans. You will have mentioned and then run away. <laughs> and, yeah, either I would no. If I got that far, I'd put my hand up for a high five, and I, he would probably just go, "Okay." <laughs> I I loved the true outpouring of like proud french canadianism when the owls walk like it was the most that like the french interviews and everyone was just like ah this is for fucking french canada it's wonderful did you see the um i think it was decoy the the translated interview he did with rds yes it did that is some holy war stuff right there that was fantastic like because you could tell that's that was definitely their billboard material was Look around. Everything is written in English. Yeah. You are in Hamilton, Ontario, my friend. <laughs> well, I think in the spirit of that, from now on, we should insist that any time that Joey goes and represents us in Canada, we make sure that his press badge is in both English and in French. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's it goes in French? <laughs> French listeners sound off in the chat. It, yeah. It's just it's just sickos, but spelled Cajun. <laughs> le, le, le committee de sickos. It has to be. You have to go the other way. Oh, yeah. there. Thanks, Google Translate. My lads, yes. <laughs> That's what we need. A oh. good. I, I like Cajun sickos, though. Yeah. Yeah. You actually, I do. Mm-hmm. That's that's going to be on Kamisha's uh, Tulane jersey when we get him. <laughs> oh, as will, well, it should be. I will say the long snapper for Winnipeg. Uh, rec- I think he recovered a fumble at one point, and he is from Acadia. So like, there's oh, more. Oh, like actual Acadia. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Not Acadia. Like he went to he went to Acadia University, which is I think the if they don't have some sort of like sister college set up with oh, yeah. LSU or ULL, I, I would be shocked. And of course, coming up this Saturday, we have the Vanier Cup, which is the Canadian College Football Championship, and again could be won by a French Canadian team because the Montreal Carabin. Carabin? I don't know how you say that. You Montreal- I just say Carabins, and if they yell at me, they yell at me. The Montreal Carabins are playing the University of British Columbia Thunderbirds. The Carabins beat the hell out of the Western Mustangs, who were number one all year. That was a big yes. shock to me. Well, and 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 that the the uh, the Laval Rouge Or, which are traditionally the Canadian powerhouse, mm-hmm. went down so early in the playoffs as well. It was not their year. 
they went down in I think the Quebec uh, court in the Quebec finals. Yeah. So e- there's four conferences in Canadian in top level Canadian football, and uh, e- how the playoffs works is each conference championship is just baked in to the uh, the playoffs, to the yeah. first round of the playoffs, which is how you got Bishop's University in uh, the playoffs, who are the a were the AUS runners up this year. Mm-hmm. The Bishop's Gators, that's not Gators as in alligators, that's Gators as in thing you put on someone. Yeah, like the, like the thing on your foot, yes. Yeah. And uh, they are in Quebec, but they moved into AUS because they wanted, quote, a step down in competition. Yeah, well, because who they have to play in the Quebec Cup, yes. Yeah. Uh, just glad that the fucking newfies are not in there yet again. Fucking hate those newfies. It's three weeks in a row, folks. Going heavy on newfie hate. Okay, so we had an idea that because it is Thanksgiving and because I have been throwing around some hot opinions lately on Twitter. Yeah, like Mr. Black, in that yeah, lately? Mr. Black, black licorice, man. Okay, Ooh. black licorice is great. I love black licorice. <laughs> and I like licorice things like ouzo, absinthe, like anise cookies, things like that. Is it like, is, is, is like Sambuca part of that family? Yes, okay. yes it is. Oh, yeah. I'm still, I still <laughs> remember a trip to... Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, and there was like a Navy frigate, frigate or whatever. I had, yeah. but a ship there, like docked in the harbor, and all the Navy people were just drinking sambuca. And it's I'm like, tough. this. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? My God! And then you know they bought me a shot, and I was like, oh, just chest on fire. I was like, oh my God. So, in in honor of me dropping hot takes, I wanted to get y'all's read on Thanksgiving. And do you have any hot Thanksgiving takes? Joey, I want to ask you first, since you're Canadian and you did Thanksgiving like a month ago. Yes. Like, what do you have things that you ride or die for in, in Canadian Thanksgiving, like certain dishes? So that's the thing. It's not as big of a deal here as I've gathered. My family always does it. We always meet up. But and I could have a completely different experience, but it's not as big of a deal here as from what I can tell. Like, my partner's family for the, for the longest time did like they would just go to a restaurant around here called swish la which do, which is a rotisserie chicken place and they would just do that um my family it's just you know standard stuff i will always say that it's, it's um, the standard canadian give us the standard Canadian. what is sta- what is standard yeah okay it i assume it's the same turkey mashed potatoes uh stuffing yeah um, I'm trying to think of like literally green beans, literally anything that's okay, unique. Okay, but your green beans, what form do they take? I never partake because I hate green beans. Okay, that makes sense. I, so I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. When you see them presented, okay, in what form are they presented? In a bowl swimming in vinegar. I'm I'm sorry. Vinegar? I'm s- I, I see why you don't eat it. Okay, I did not know this was <laughs> unique. Sorry? Now I'm, I'm learning. So are we pickled green beans? <laughs> We're all learning together right now. So, so my the green beans in my house, my preferred ones, are swimming in bacon fat and like onions and mushrooms, and they're 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 basically super soft. They are not al dente. They are squishy green beans. Yes, which my wife, is, which my wife hates. I'm she taking likes, this back to my family and telling them, "See, I'm not crazy for hating this." Because she likes she likes very crisp green beans. She wants them like cooked just a little bit. So they still have some bite to them, whereas I prefer my green beans stewed in, like, like you would cook collards almost. Mm. But that's a very like, southern thing. Yeah. I mean, a- as you probably would figure, the green beans in my home are presented as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Campbell's, um, <laughs> oh, yes. set out for us mm-hmm. by swimming them in mushroom soup and covering them in French fried onions. That's, that's, I, I, that's a whole other presentation. Exactly. We do love right. a frizzled onion. I will say my my one Thanksgiving take, which I brought up on the Twitter a year ago, I think, is that corn is an, is an underrated side. Mm-hmm. In what form? Swimming in vinegar, like all Canadian. No, <laughs> <laughs> not on the cob. Okay, if that's what you're asking. So just uh, like that, just like corn, just niblets. like bowl of corn, bowl of corn with butter. Okay, yes. okay. Hi. Um, and we I we always also do like just a like if you want it, some biscuits and pickles. That's not a. That's Why not a are there dish. more pickles? Why that's do you have separate. so much vinegar? That's all they got to preserve their food. It gets cold cannibal. up here. I don't know what to tell you. We can't grow a lot of stuff that late in the year. Okay, so so Beth, I'm going to guess since you have a family of about a thousand people, 
you have some very particular Thanksgiving takes and dishes that you have to have. What are yours? So Thanksgiving is one of those things that um, my mother is ride or die yeah. for. The same dishes are served at Thanksgiving, regardless of whether anyone will even eat them. Mm. That's not the point. <laughs> The point is, the point is a slavish adherence to tradition. Man, that's, that, that is, that is so fucking Catholic. That's mm-hmm. so goddamn Catholic. Yeah. So the, the corn that is presented mm-hmm. is really more of a quiche. Okay. To which corn is invited along. Um, it's, so take corn, mm-hmm. put it in a lot of eggs, top it with a spice mixture that says French toast and uh, bake it at 400 for a while. Like cinnamon. What? And- like warm oh, yeah. spices? Oh, yeah. Cinnamon corn yep. egg pie? I assume you <laughs> ate this before eggs became Beth poison, right? Yeah, it's been a good 20 years since I've had this. Yeah, yeah. Does it taste the um, way that I'm imagining it tasting? I can't remember. Okay. okay. Well, If you want to come over for Thanksgiving, I mean, I'm sure we'll have enough food. <laughs> like we're going to try. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to yeah. try this. So the biggest thing at this point about our Thanksgiving that it, that really separates it from just the hyper traditional meal, which is like, there is nothing in this world that cannot be casseroled is the general gist of our Thanksgiving experience is that a few years ago, my mother discovered that our local butcher would debone a Turkey. If you asked okay. and my friends deboning your Turkey means that it's very easy for you to slice your Turkey. Cause you basically trust that thing up like a pork loin. But here's the thing. When you take the bones out of a turkey and it doesn't have a backbone anymore and it doesn't have ribs and you take its skin and you sort of cinch it up and put pins down the front of it, what it looks like in the oven is that you have decided to cook an infant at 375 degrees. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Like, this looks like a onesie that we have decided to cook. It is horrifying. The, The turkey onesie. I will happily provide pictures of this to the account. Oh, okay, okay. yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have you're gonna we're gonna have to see that. Yeah. You're gonna have to supply a photo. Of this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's never presented to the table in this form. By the time anyone sees the turkey, we have rendered it down into its component parts, and it's sitting on a platter. So no one has to deal with the eldritch horror of looking like we baked my nephew for a while. Yeah, but yeah, it's. I mean, I think it's extremely funny, but I'm sick and twisted. <laughs> so, hey. yeah. Boneless turkey. I never even would have. Cons- like, I've, I've had, like, turkey breast separately when I have to buy myself or something. But I've never, like. Yeah. Our turkey is also always a very weird sort of centaur creation. We always get at least, like, four to six extra legs in say, addition are, to Are you turkey. making a tur turkey key? Yeah, you, I mean, you could stuff turkey in turkey. To, to, to turkey. I've done it. <laughs> the turkey stuff. I feel like the boneless the boneless turkey helps with that. Sort we of put an eight pound turkey in the twenty two pound turkey one time. That was fun. I have I have this old ass cookbook. I can't remember where I bought it, but it has recipes from hotels around the world. And there is a recipe in there for stuffed camel. Hmm. Yes, I remember and, this. And you have to like it, like it is it is a bog in the log and the log in the frog. Like it just keeps like. Just yep. keep stuffing it with other things. There's an egg in the center somewhere. Yeah, yeah. it's it's fascinating. Um, I've yeah, never been was, able to get a full camel, but this it's, thing was it's just like the Saturday night. Around. It's like the Saturday Night Live taco, where yeah. it's like it's wrapped in a pizza, it's wrapped in chili, it's wrapped in a crepe. Right. My my contribution to Thanksgiving is usually in baking bread and making desserts. That's what I do. Um, I do the other stuff, but the only areas where I'm allowed to riff are on desserts. So. <laughs> Hey girl, this what, year we're having a white chocolate vanilla bean cheesecake and a French apple tart in mm. addition to the mandatory pumpkin pie. Riffing on on baked goods is is a dangerous game, though. Nah, this is my jam. Yeah? I know all these chord changes. We're cool. This, this is Beth's giant steps. We're good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pink Girl, what are your Thanksgiving? Hmm. Yeah, cool. So this is a weird one to ask me because my extended family does mostly does not live where I grew up and obnoxiously pit dad worked nights and odd hours for a lot of my childhood. So we spent a lot of Thanksgivings like ping ponging around to various family friends. Um, But for the last few years, um, obnoxiously pit boyfriend and I have, and my parents too, before they moved to Massachusetts um, would spend Thanksgiving with obnoxiously pit boyfriend's family who are I love this naming convention. I can't say it enough. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um they are all 
like from PA obnoxiously pit boyfriend's okay. dad is like very Lancaster County specifically. And his mom is from Nepa, but has PA Dutch roots. And some of these things are things that become evident at family gatherings. I've talked about red beet eggs on the podcast yeah. before. <laughs> the thing that I'm going to talk about today is Pennsylvania Dutch potato filling. Oh yes. Yes. Okay. So imagine stuffing. Okay. But it's potatoes. Is this Idaho potato bowl recipe? This kind is... of. It's so it's like mashed potatoes, but it's got all the stuffing things in it. Okay. It's okay. So you're, making like, so you're making like stuffing gnocchi. No. It, no, because it's but just it's still like, like a whole like thing of mashed. It's like okay. mashed potatoes. Okay. It's like very okay. stagey mashed potatoes. Yes. So, it's a, so, it's a, so it's a deconstructed pierogi. Kind of. Actually, it would be a good pierogi <laughs> filling. You've, you've actually got me on an application for this because, like, okay. obnoxiously pit boyfriend's family loves it. And I'm just over here like, but I want stuffing that has bread in it. And this you is put, Do you put bread in this? No, it's it's potato. Just potato, okay. But I had this moment of, like, oh, it's mashed potatoes and you put also put bread in this thing. Some of the recipes on Google also have bread in it. But, like, the version that obnoxiously pit boyfriend's ma- family makes does not have bread in it. It's okay, mashed okay. potatoes that has stuff have stuffing things in them. Do you need to come visit? Because I'm going to use two of the big stock pots to make stuffing and I have to get out the great soup or so I'm definitely going to have enough. Oh, soup or I am. I will be in Massachusetts for Thanksgiving this year. Oh, that's right. Yes. you're gonna be So there. it's fine. It'll keep. We'll put it out on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> we drive back through. Just stop by. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. I've never heard of this before. Anything else? Anything else that just always draws I mean- your... I make my grandmother's apple cider recipe also, which I have, have shared in the chat with folks. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it's a good time. It makes your house smell good when you make it and you can make it and it's supposed to be served hot, but you can make it and then cool it and bottle it, which is what I always do. So okay. would recommend. Um, I forgot to I forgot to mention the one thing I mentioned in the Discord, which is a fun thing we do because our Thanksgiving is on a Sunday in October, but we don't want to feel left out from the American Thanksgiving traditions. So what we always do, even though... My, I am a Bills fan and my dad is a Raiders fan. We always go out of our way to find the Lions game on TV so we can watch the Lions on Thanksgiving like the Americans. Yeah, a fine American <laughs> tradition. Mm-hmm. What uh, if they have a bye week? That, I can't remember what we did. I, I remember one year we watched like a Browns-Ravens game instead, so that might have been a Lions bye week. There you go. Yeah, Browns are about as close as you can get to the Lions, I think. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's the Washington football team, too, so... Yeah. Bad football, a beautiful tradition. Arthur, do you have anything that you're big about Thanksgiving? Uh, not really. I mean, so like my family, we don't live near any of our kind of extended family. So we've never really done like big gatherings for Thanksgiving. But yeah. my mom is really into it. So she always like really wants to do it. Uh, you know, even like during 2020, during the pandemic, when it's like we like no one else is coming. Like she still is like, I have all these dishes I want to make. And like, I'm going to be honest, like there are a lot of things where I thought I didn't like a dish. And then like, you know, after I grew up and like went away to college and um, experienced other things, there are a lot of dishes I realized like, Oh, I just don't like my mom's version of that dish. <laughs> um, and like, yeah, that makes sense. Th- Thanksgiving is a lot. Like it's not that it's not that like, I don't think like, Oh, you like you can't cook or something. We just have different philosophies on like what food should be. Okay. Um, so like everything that she's making, she's trying to figure out like, oh, like, how can I make this healthier? Right. Like you were talking about like how, how you wanted stuffing with bread and they only had stuffing with potatoes. Like my mom is someone who will make stuffing with like brown rice because that's healthier. And that will oh. be the stuffing that we have for Thanksgiving. Okay. No, um, yeah. and, and she's also very particular about like what, um, what dishes are there? Like I will always, um, kind of fight with her over, macaroni and cheese just because it's like the only thing that i'm interested in making gotcha. and she's like that was not on my thanksgiving table growing up so i don't want it here gotcha. and so that's always that's always fun and we we hash that out every year and also with like i mean just just in terms of like what foods that i can do and do well like i'll try to do some sort of appetizers and she's like the the appetizers should be charcuterie but just veggies right like no nothing else that's uh so like a veggie platter yeah just just (laughs) veggies no like no meats no cheeses no crackers none of that we just just the veggies it's it's the sort of thing like so like i'm not 
really going to have any sort of Thanksgiving this week um, because uh, one of my family members got COVID. So we're mm. not, we're not going to do the thing, but I, I know that my mom is still going to try to cook things and, you know, drive them and distribute them to people. But, you know, for me, it's like the highlight of my weekend will not be Thanksgiving. I will probably make like macaroni and cheese and do some appetizers and, probably make those before watching Oregon, Oregon state on Friday and, you know, then have leftovers for Saturday. So I'm, I'm fully college football focused this time. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, there's just not a lot with the actual holiday that I do. Well, Kamish, what do you guys do? All right. Well, it's a little bit different. Like growing up, Thanksgiving was kind of a big deal. Like we would always be the, we were like the middle area of the family. So like everybody would okay. always come to us. So we had like family in like Florida, Texas. Uh, we had family in like Pennsylvania. It, it, everybody would wind up in New Orleans for Thanksgiving, <laughs> which was. I can't imagine why. I, why. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody wanted to go to the Bayou Classic. I get it. it we had just like the, the standard like turkey, mashed potatoes. We had this, you know, like that Pepperidge Farm uh, bag stuffing. Like yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you see that always on the end caps uh, for the grocery store and mm-hmm. stuff. And then my mom would throw in like the Jimmy Dean sage sausage with it, along with like some onions and celery and stuff. And then you would do it on the stove, and then you would bake it after it. Uh, so you do that. That was that's probably like my favorite thing to do. I've actually adapted that and made it more Cajun. Uh, so I actually throw in some andouille into that too. So uh, a, little, a little bit of cayenne and some some hot sauce, nice. which is is, is phenomenal. Uh, I, I can't really do it with the two kiddos now, so yeah, it's a little too spicy. But I, I do have uh, uh, the dad thing going on. I, I love to smoke a turkey now. Like I have like a, a smoker, and I will just smoke the shit out of a turkey. It is so good. Uh, it is is it's I don't know. It's great. I don't think we had like really any out of the 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 realm things. You know, we had like the mashed potatoes. We had the green beans. We never did the casserole. Uh, never did the casserole. It was always like green beans that were like the ones that you said, uh, your wife, like, uh, it was the green beans uh, not in vinegar, Joey, but it was like a, a big, I, I just remember this pot. It was like a clear pot, like a clear glass pot of like, like long green beans that were, uh, slightly crispy and crunchy with like some oil and maybe some slivered almonds on it or whatever. Uh, and then every now and then the sweet potato, uh, yam with some marshmallow things would make an appearance, but it, it was always like we never had like the fancy cranberry sauce. It was always the canned cranberry stuff with the ridges. With yep. the ridges, like it would just. I I, I don't like it. Uh, like I don't like the normal cranberry or the other cranberry sauce. I, either one, I, I don't like. It. One year, someone attempted to bring in actual cranberry sauce, and there were protests. <laughs> no, that, that always happens because people are, get used to like a certain flavor. Am I the only one who likes actual cranberry sauce? It's okay. It's yeah, I do. Not. I don't, I'm not, I'm I've not. only had it once, but I like it. I mean, I like it's so much better than the stuff from the can. I, I don't. I, I stick to cocktails for my cranberry. We make okay. about two gallons of it <laughs> yeah. and usually freeze it. From, so from fresh, though, them, right? From fresh, right? How many people do you have in attendance on average at Thanksgiving? Um, Mid 30s. Good yeah. Lord. Do you like but, rent out a banquet hall? No, we just have it in the house. It's fine. Everything's fine. What could go wrong? Uh, I, I Right now, people are either going to start arriving on Friday or early Saturday. We're not sure yet. I thought they, you were going to say so, people are going to start arriving now. No. Well, so th- it, they may, that very well could happen. <laughs> I don't ever trust anyone in my family to arrive. Yeah, when I, they as long as I've known were. you now, Beth, I've learned that your family is ephemeral and just shows up and leaves when they care to. Oh, we came unstuck in time long ago and we have no desire to ever be stuck in there again. Yeah, we don't hold Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. Okay. Our Thanksgiving, because there's a billion of us, it became very easy for us to just say like, go spend your time with your significant others and everybody else on Thursday. We will have our Thanksgiving on a different day. Yeah. This year it is Saturday. Okay. Do we have um, any? Um, do we have any I, pie opinions? I mean, do we uh, have like. Before we do that, can oh. I drop? Can I drop something real fast? Oh, drop it! Uh, uh, I dropped something in the chat. This is a recipe I may have talked about here before. It is my favorite recipe. Okay. This is for my grandma's uh, Waldorf salad. This is out of her. This <laughs> oh. is out of her um, 
church cookbook. Okay. Beth, this original recipe is the one that you need to use for yours. I'll read it out loud. Five pounds of apples, 4.5 pounds of grapes, three bags of marshmallows, and they'd better be white mini marshmallows. My grandma okay. laid it to my grandpa because he brought fucking colored ones one time. Say the next one. Six. Say it out loud with your human mouth. Six pounds of sour cream. <laughs> That's a lot of sour cream. It's a lot, but but the, the and then one pound of walnuts and one head of celery because you need a little green in there. Do we have a picture now, of this made? Um, I don't. I can get you one. Right, I'm, I'm gonna make that. it because we saw I, Beth I just scary turkey to, in the chat. <laughs> this is, I'm just imagining I, Beth stirring this with the soup or the, oh, I would. the best part about this is that the sour cream decomposes the marshmallows overnight. And so they become like this, like it's becomes very gooey and delicious. This is amazing. Everyone who I've made this for has loved it. Like Can this I just is say, this delicious seems like thing. not enough celery. You don't want a whole <laughs> lot of celery. Now, no. now, now then I'm going to show you guys how I've broken this recipe down because I have had to divide and this said, several times. And they said I'd never use grade nine math. Be in Newton's, be in Newton's. So I have to, I have, I've got it down to only three quarters of a pound of sour cream. <laughs> And an eighth of a head of celery. I like that you specify bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. How many how many crock pots do you think I use for Thanksgiving? Ooh, are oh. we playing over under? Like, yeah, like, like ten? More? I, I it has to be plus ten. We do not use crock pots on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It will sit entirely unused. Ooh. Yep. Because you would burn a breaker. You, your breakers were just <laughs> like fried. Now we have like 200 dance servers. We're fine. <laughs> I forget that your house was built, you know, to to survive 200 people. I just imagine. Um, yeah. I just imagine Beth actually going out to the cranberry bog in her complex <laughs> and like making the own, you nope. know. Nope. Like, nope. Like, nope. Like, oh nope. no, she nope. won't do that because nope. cranberry bogs have spiders. spiders. Bog spiders. Yep. Yes, bog spiders. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yep. I, nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I just remembered the one curveball that I attempted for Thanksgiving this year, which was soundly vetoed before it could be made. Uh, we decided this year we would get together for breakfast and then dinner. And breakfast was just like a regular bacon, eggs, whatever. But I said, because my grandma was doing was planning on doing both for the whole family. I said, let me handle breakfast. And she said, what are you going to do for breakfast? And I said, I got exactly what I'm going to make for breakfast. And I crossed out the title of the recipe and I just showed it to her. And it was Garth's Breakfast Bowl. And she said, absolutely not get the hell out of my house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've, I've been trying to make breakfast Thanksgiving a thing for years, if only to get away from the traditional Thanksgiving menu that I don't really care for. Mm. I do have a friend of mine that has come up with the best thing ever, and it's leftover uh, egg rolls. And what mm. he does is he buys egg roll wrappers. He oh. puts the stuff, like Thanksgiving stuff, in egg roll wrappers, deep fries them the next day. And then he takes the cranberry sauce, mixes it with a little uh, soy and uh, fish sauce, and makes like a sweet and sour dip. And honestly, I'm going to, so this year, I, before I wrap up on this, uh, this year, I am not making traditional Thanksgiving because it's just me and my wife, my, all of our friends that we should go to think Thanksgiving with are out of town. So it's just the two of us, the kid. So I'm making tapas, I'm making yeah. mussels and shrimp and manchango fennel apple salad and drinking Rioja. I'm just going to do that. That's what I'm doing. But next year, I'm going to be doing this because I want to make basically, you know, Thanksgiving chimichangas. Side note. And and we're running out of time on Thanksgiving, so all I will say is this. Jordan, Google the Gobblerito. Yes. You took the words right out of my mouth. And that's where it ends? That's where the Google episode the ends? Google the Gobblerito. I will be making some some turkey and uh, sausage gumbo with whatever the leftover smoked turkey. So that, that'll be fun. The Gobblerito looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very large. It costs $14 nice. and packs four, one, 1,400 calories. <laughs> Oh, it, it oh, is. See, I'm sure it is worth your fourteen dollars. I've never actually had it. I have. OPG. I misheard you. I thought you said Goblerita, and I was expecting oh, no. a drink. No, 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 no. no, no. This is. I mean, well, that gives me an idea. Can be blended. <laughs> God, yeah, exactly. Of course, it gives me. All blended. right, time to make something new with the milkshake machine. <laughs> okay, so we are now on to college football because it is rivalry week, sort of. I feel like we've lost some of the oomph of rivalry week as of late. I hope that when Texas and Texas A&M play again, we get back to this weekend because that's traditionally was a Thursday game. That was that and egg bowl. So you had two dishes. Now you just have a lot of eggs. 
And we all know that Beth loves eggs. So, Beth, are you allergic to the egg bowl? I haven't asked this. Um, I you haven't imbibed it bowl? in a few years. I, I have an EpiPen right now, so I would feel a little safer than usual. I just imagine Beth watching the egg bowl and just <laughs> stabbing myself. Jamming her like the EpiPen. Being like, nope, I couldn't risk it. Okay. We have this sort of bowl eligibility thing we're looking at here. And there's some interesting things going on because we have 24 teams that have to win their final game to be bowl eligible. That are sitting at five and six. And there are 15 spots left. But we're looking at something special here because there are two teams that we're trying to sneak into a bowl game. Who are they, Arthur? Who are our teams we're trying to get in? Well, so we have James Madison and Jacksonville State. They have both won way more than six games, which normally gets you a bowl game, but they are both transitioning up from FCS. Um, And they are actually both in the same. They're both in year two of the transition. Uh, James Madison is in a special situation. Arthur's just trying to force this trans bullshit on us. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So most teams, when they transition Madison from FCS to FBS, they spend one year playing mostly an FCS schedule where they're not eligible for the playoffs, but they are, you know, getting ready to move up. So I think they have more scholarships. They're getting ready. And then the second year they play their FBS schedule and then they are full FBS members. But James Madison, because the Sun Belt, because of the way that uh, conference realignment was happening, and also because they really wanted to get out of their current conference, they moved up last year. So they've played two full seasons of basically FBS yeah, without you, being eligible. Can you explain this to me? I was I was shocked because I thought last year was like I, for some reason I didn't think this was their second year because yep, it's their second year yeah, yeah. so that's it's, it's crazy any yeah. any way you slice it whether you play an fbs or an fcs schedule it's, you have to wait two years right and the rule is in place basically to try to stop teams from taking advantage of like oh we have a, like a really good senior class let's go play fbs this year right which i don't think conceivably any team would do that but theoretically that was a problem that the ncaa foresaw and that's why they want to um make that a rule that that you have to have this transition period. So James Madison and Jacksonville state, they've won enough games. They're at the FBS level. They by all means should be in bowl games, but they are not eligible. However, the rule is they are the first in line. If we don't have enough eligible teams. So before any of the five, and I mean, we've seen five and seven teams in years past get bowl games, right? Last year, rice got a bowl game. Jacksonville State and James Madison would be in front of all of those five win teams. So before you go looking at APR, those those are who would get it. So, however, so, we still wait, have to see so one how second, many teams Arthur, we need. Can you can you break down like after the six and sixes? What are the next ones normally? Like who gets picked normally after the six, the six and sixes? So after the six and sixes, uh, normally then you have the teams that either have waivers or that, and then you go to any team that is otherwise eligible but is in this reclassification period and then you go to the APR base for five okay. and seven teams. Uh, so okay. Okay. If, yeah. if you if you want to say, for example, a sneak peek, um, I know like Minnesota is high up. There. I think they're the number one team. Uh, so if they lose yeah. this week, there aren't enough teams. They are in their third in line basically after James Madison and Jacksonville State. And another thing, too, we've seen in the past, right? The NCAA one year added the uh, Frisco Football Classic. Yes, they did. They've been willing to add one bowl game. I'm not sure what the limit there would be, right? Like, there's no precedent for them adding more than one. That but one, we also that one haven't was, seen a situation where they needed it. That, and one was just, that, that one was to sneak in, I believe, North Texas, who's going to be local anyways. Yes. That was the yes. thinking around that one, if I remember correctly. Right, right. But they could presumably do some sort of localish game in a number of different yeah, places. Sure, it just sure. happened to be Frisco. Right now, there are 24 teams, uh, soon to be 23, I think. I don't want to jinx them, but Eastern Michigan is playing right now, and they are leading 24 to 8 uh, with about seven minutes 20, left in that game. So they're 11. well on their way to 11. getting that sixth 11. win. Uh, Buffalo just kicked the field goal. Uh, oh, Buffalo just scored. Okay. The Buffalo just kicked but, the field um, goal. 24, 11 with like six minutes left to go. Okay. okay, well, I, I still feel good about where Eastern Michigan is. So that's that's the interesting thing. We don't have any games this week where two five-win teams are playing each other, where the winner is in a bowl and the loser is not. So that means that, you know, theoretically, all 24 teams could win, and we'd have 
way too many teams. Theoretically, a lot of them could lose and we could have a lot of vacancies. What I'm seeing right now, just based on, you know, kind of Vegas point spreads and what some computers are saying is that we're going to be pretty close to that mark, right? All of these teams that only have five wins, they're not the most consistent teams. They could lose, they could win. They've had up and down seasons for the most part. And so it's going to be a fun weekend of watching and I'm going to be keeping track of this. We're going to keep updates on the social media. So if you follow us on our socials, we will have updates on where we stand in this tracking. We could end up with way too many teams. We could end up with not enough. Um, it's very volatile and we'll find out this weekend. So as, as we go into this, uh, I will say that to learn about the bowl game, like the order of things, because I was having Arthur was helping like explain this to me as well. Uh, I ended up going to a document called the postseason handbook. And there's a couple of things in here I need to share with you guys. First off, I'll drop this in the chat. I found out that there are very specific rules, you might imagine, about how how you can design your field for a bowl game, where you can put things. So I want to show you something I call Oops All Bowl Sponsors. because This is an option. Uh, drop this in the chat for y'all. So you can have things like the bowl name and the title, the city name in the end zone. You can have the team names. We've seen that a lot. Look at the bottom option there. You can have the title sponsor logo dead center and in both end zones. Gonna need that to happen in the newly uh, the newly branded Pop Tart Bowl, where at the fifty there is an actual Pop Tart, and then it just says Pop Tarts yeah. in each end zone. But they're different Pop Tarts. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I found that was wonderful is this is part of the officiating section of this, and it talks about what you have to give officials for your games and like all the stuff you need to clear background checks, whatever. But then I found something under gifts. Okay. I'm going to read this verbatim. This is from the NCAA handbook. The bowl games management shall present each game official, replay official, alternate official, and conference coordinator of officials, if in attendance, with a bowl gift. Is it really a gift if you have to give it to them? Hmm. This gift is up to the discretion of the bowl, but will include at a minimum a bowl specific commemorative watch. If a bowl does not produce a watch, the gift should include a bowl logo and be of similar significance. That is the most old man shit I've ever heard. Yep. Like, yeah, everyone gets a gold that, watch. Is that the official's union? That's, that's, well, that's just if, mandating If you that? can imagine, too, right? Think about, like, these officials are probably are almost certainly working multiple bowl games, right? Like, I, I would doubt that they just do one-offs. Um, You know, I they probably pull from the officials who work the games during the season. But then also, if you've been official an official for a long time, like, are you getting new watches every single year? I mean, I'm just imagining like, you know, some longtime NCAA football referee yeah. have like a like a full arm of watches or so something. So folks, so folks in our chat have yeah. said that that like they have people that are close to some of these bowl games, and like this is still a thing. Like people have oh. huge collections of Cotton Bowl watches. There's or whatever. there's yeah. there's a section in Steve Spurrier's restaurant that in Gainesville where he has all of the watches he's gotten from these bowl games on display in Steve Spurrier's restaurant in Gainesville. So every I didn't single know watch. This, giving watches to people yes. still exist. So when we have our bowl game, we have to give people watches now? Like that's, I, that just, it's so bizarre. Congratulations. I'm, everybody gets a sickos committee Swatch watch. Uh, oh yeah. When, when, when Swatch tried to do, when Swatch tried to do metric time. Let's get yes, the Casio calculator. See, it's a Casio calculator, but it's all in base eight. <laughs> Is the bowl game in Denmark? The the idea that like you would have to you have to give every ref a watch is just so fun. Like I love it. It's gotta get that watch. I'm just imagining like a long time ref wandering through Central Park with a trench coat full of watches. Yep. Or behold, my collection of military bowl watches. Well, what what happens if there's like a timekeeping issue, like in the game, right? Like the, <laughs> they set the clock on, uh, like wrong or something. Be like, well, it's your clock. And you gave it to us. The the idea of being a single and ready to mingle ref going to a bar, being like, oh, I saw you noticing my Myrtle Beach Bowl watch. Yeah, got it for. I was the alternate ref the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Just that I is. I was the replay official at the famous Toastery Bowl. Hey, they got so famous Toastery. <laughs> We're pretty sure got locked out of their old Twitter account. <laughs> Made a new one. Yep. And they're trying to get followers. So, hey, 
follow famous toastery they're at least playing along they've already did a like what should we dump on like, we can't dump hot coffee on them first off you can't dump hot coffee you're choosing not to yeah you can do anything once i need to i need to send a message to scooters coffee by the way since now they're sponsoring the frisco's bowl and that's what they're gonna dump because i'm gonna bet it's cold brew yes and if it's gonna be there, I'm gonna be there to at least get uh, you know to top off before. Because mm-hmm. Picker and I have one thing in common. Well, we have lots of things in common, but the big thing we have in common is that we both ride or die cold brew, no matter what the temperature is outside. I have most I of a gallon of it in my fridge right now. Me too. Just just mm-hmm. put a cup next to Chris Creighton's head and just collect the spillage. Mm-hmm. See, I I'm getting to the point where I feel like the Gatorade bath has been done, and I think that what we need to do is we need to have both coaches coach in a dunk tank. <laughs> Ooh. Just waiting. Okay, I like this. Just waiting. Are we having a Toledo Bowl now? I'm picturing like a tiny shark circling <laughs> in the dunk tank. Oh, so this is the Myrtle Beach Bowl. It's, 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 the, it's the literal hot seat. Am I, you know, are, we gonna, are you going to get fired or are you going to get by a shark today? Let's see what happens. <laughs> Russian roulette coaching is something not something I considered, but some fan bases I think would be way up for this. It gives a lot of stakes to a lot of games that don't have stakes. We we constantly say that we need to have stakes in games because there's no relegation. What if what if the head coach might end up being eaten by a shark? Yeah, very small Live on shark. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got to Just slightly chewed on. Yeah. yeah. You get Soul Surfer. You are the name of the movie. That pinky. Come on. Yeah, Soul Surfer was the one where the, the the lady got her leg bitten off her arm. It was a leg or arm? I can't remember. That one. I think it was the arm. So the teams that we have to get over the line that we're dragging across the line this this weekend are in the ACC, Syracuse and Virginia Tech. By the way, I put out a list today of the ACC if divisions still existed and people lost their minds today. Oh, God. Because Miami fans did not realize they were two and five in conference. Oh, yeah. Like that, had, that had not sunk in on them. And like it was a lot of like, when they saw their names next to who also like Pitt, <laughs> and, Miami and Pitt have the same conference record. Yeah. That's and, fucked and games. like that was that was just <laughs> emotionally scarring for Miami fans in our timeline. No, but, the the ACC has been really weird this year. Where usually I feel like there's a pretty strong correlation between how well you do out of conference and how well you do in conference. And the ACC this year has just been all over the place, right? Like you'll have teams, you have some teams that are good out of conference and in conference, right? Like FSU or Louisville. You have some teams that are bad in both, right? Like, I don't know, like Pitt. But then you have other teams where it's like, wow, like they, there's a marked difference in their conference record versus their non-conference record. Uh, Like Syracuse, 4-0 out of conference. And they're what, 1-5, 1-6 in in conference? Yeah, oh, like there's, there's that. Right. There's there's teams that have done terrible out of conference but are winning games in conference. I think Virginia Tech is probably the best example of that. It's just a weird jumbled mess that, you know, you you got to look hostile. at both standings. Uh, Miami, Pitt, and Virginia all have the same conference record. <laughs> and Miami fans, uh, Joey was nice to drop that in the chat for us, the graphic. The Now, of course, you, this isn't perfectly correlated because clearly they didn't play other division teams, and so... But if we were just to keep the divisions, no matter who they play this year, it would be Florida State and Georgia Tech in the final, in the championship game. And I feel like we were robbed of this. Georgia Tech fans are upset about this, too. Yeah, they're claiming it. Raise, hang, hang the banner. Who the fuck's going to tell you no? Uh, Jed Fish is saying that Arizona's going to Arizona's gonna claim the Pac-12 South championship. <laughs> Fuck yeah, do it. Who cares? This is all made up. Are we going to create a new division for the ACC with expansion? Mm. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to assign that i was thinking about that we'll, like, we'll, I, we're gonna have I've been about that. Coastal? yeah i mean we have the atlantic we have the coastal we'll just have to create like central gulf <laughs> acc landlocked acc lake <laughs> okay so in the acc syracuse virginia tech in the american navy rice and usf navy being interesting because Navy has two games to get their win. I in our mentions, they've been saying that there's something about Navy. Typically, they have the bowl game locked up before the Army game. Like they they yeah. get that bid. If they lose to SMU, they may not get selected for a bid because both our Army can't be bowl eligible because of the two FCS wins, which that they got ruled out last year with that. And then so there may be a, a weird wild card here, the Navy wild card. If they don't beat SMU, they may not go to a bowl game, even though 
they could be six and six if, if they beat Army. Like I can't fathom that happening because Navy is a draw no matter where you drop it, them. It, again, that's what they're saying in the mentions. That's that's not us. There's a way here with just how the math maths, where if a if a very certain amount of teams end up bowl eligible or not, it is a the Army Navy game becomes a play in where Army is playing for JMU. No, they they yeah. because the game is so late. They can't prepare for a bowl game unless they already have one scheduled. Like they have to lock. Like, they have to lock it in. They have to lock it in. So, are you saying they would decline a bowl? They game may. If, I don't. I don't know for sure. So, it, there's the Navy wild card out there. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah, we'll we'll find out. I mean, this every year when we do this bowl stuff, right? There are people that do bowl projections. I mean, I kind of do some on my own. Uh, there are a lot of those, especially earlier in the year. Or if you see from a national outlet, that's like, uh, we're just guessing here. We're just, you know, putting names in places. Yeah. But if you get closer, like now, if you talk to like, there are people like specific beat writers for teams can sometimes hear about like where a team is going or specific, you know, people that are connected with a bowl. Right. So like, for example, if someone like a reporter in El Paso might have some idea of like what teams the Sun Bowl is looking at, um, right. just as an example, um, and then, I mean, there, but usually if it's just someone doing a full bowl projection, they don't have a lot of actual info there. Uh, Brett McMurphy is a pretty good follow. He is very, very on top of tweeting out any bowl information that he gets. And he has probably the, in terms of just as a national reporter, probably has the most, uh, info on like actual scheduling. Yeah. These, it's not like this just gets dropped a week from Sunday. No, it's like, clearly. this is it right it is being worked on every bull right now is working through like hey like we these are the teams we're looking at and we'll see like if this team is available we're going to take them if not we're going to take this team and they will have you know some communication with the schools so the schools will have some idea of you know what to get a head start on but um yeah i mean navy we don't really know because we haven't seen this specific scenario before and we'll find out we usually at least have the Bahamas Bowl locked in at this point. Breaking Ooh. news. Go for it. Eastern Michigan wins yes. 24-11. And it's a shit win. They didn't oh, score my. anything <laughs> in the second <laughs> half, but they're bowl eligible. They held on to that shit. And they got to bowl eligibility. If they win a bowl game this year, it will be the first time in program history they win two bowls in a row. Hell yeah. Wonder, Shout out to Chris they, Creighton. I wonder if they'll get matched up with San Jose State again. Get them with San Jose State again. Lock them in there with this. This is the rivalry that I love. Uh, uh, I just wanted to point out real quick, uh, New Mexico State and Fresno State basketball are going into overtime at 69-69. Nice. nice. Other teams on the cusp, Illinois, Minnesota, Nebraska, BYU, TCU, UCF, Central Michigan, and Northern Illinois, Colorado State, Utah State, Cal, and Wazoo. Wazoo, you have the chance to do the funniest thing I've ever seen. Florida, Mississippi State, South Carolina, and Louisiana Lafayette, Marshall, and Old Dominion. Before we get into like the fry, because this we're going to have to break this up a little weirdly because, again, the games don't kind of fit like the normal order of things. No, this is the special uh, week. <laughs> so, because we have, let's say, the games tonight, no football on Wednesday. Nope. On Thursday, we have two games, a, a D2 Classic, Tuskegee, and Alabama State. And then we have our Lord and Savior, the Egg Bowl. Egg Bowl. Egg Bowl. Egg. UT Chattanooga. What? My, that was that game, wasn't it? No, that, that it was, was that game. That was the game. Yeah, it, that was that was, yeah, the, was... Dan, the Dan Mullen UT Chattanooga. Okay. I cannot see you here for my because of my giant egg bowl trophy. Uh, this was the you know we've had people piss in the end zone in this game. We've had you know just pure chaos in this game. Mississippi State needs this game. Ole Miss winning this game does really nothing for them. Like it doesn't really lower or raise their like standings and anything. So this has a good possibility to be weird. It's always weird. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain to people who don't follow college football why the Egg Bowl can be fascinating. Because the it, Egg Bowl is the platonic ideal of college football. Because it's just two teams that absolutely fucking hate each other. And the fun thing and they're, they're not playing for 
Hmm? The fun thing for this year is like Ole Miss is like you know okay they're eliminated from the SEC West they're they're out so yeah. really Ole Miss is just basically playing for like a fancy bowl. Mississippi State is is playing for bowl eligibility. They need to make a bowl. Uh, also, they do they hate just each other. Fired their coach. Nothing, nothing makes sense in this game. Mississippi State just fired their coach. They both teams hate each other. Uh, I, I mean. There was one going across the timeline today where, like, a giant 40-mile-an-hour gust of wind, like, blew the crap out of a Mississippi State 27-yard field goal <laughs> and, and would not let it go into the goalposts. <laughs> and so they, the name of that game is God Hates Mississippi State. Uh, so, so, <laughs> so, like, this, this rivalry is ridiculous. I always have to consider this uh, in the top of the game of the week, regardless of what it is. I know we have some folks in our Discord that don't think this is anything, but this is this game. No matter what it is, it's at Starkville. It's it is it is cowbells. It is they hate everybody. It's it's something weird always happens in this game, and these you put these two teams together, uh, it is it is a, a glorious mess that is a lot of the times changes the outcome of the entirety of college football. <laughs> This game is two raccoons in a washing machine full of pennies fighting over a pizza crust. And if you don't enjoy that, you don't enjoy college football. I don't know what to tell you. I, I can't say if, if you don't enjoy this, I can't. I might be able to sell you on the sport, guys. If if you don't enjoy this, how did you find our podcast? That is true. That is, that is true. Folks who do not watch college football who listen to this podcast sound off in the comments. I would like to do an anthropological study on you. There, there is at least one follower we have. I don't know if they listen to the podcast, but one follower we have who joined us from our Eurovision coverage, and every now and then they pop up and just in our in our replies like, "Hey, what are you talking about?" <laughs> I do know of two people who only get their college football news from us. That's awful. That's a bad idea, guys. Breaking yep. news I, from no, the sickos. Look, look, there's there's my my normal friends, like in in real life friends, not associated with the committee here. Yeah, they they get all their only get their college football news through us so uh it's it's a great way to live honestly i mean really like why live and that is die such, that is such a weird slice why? i just i oh, want no. you to imagine yeah this is a this is someone these are people who get their college football news and know nothing about alabama the, nothing I, they, there's no <laughs> alabama, not exist. They, I, they know something about alabama that they lost to ulm in 2007 that's what they know that's right I was they, know, they, know that. <laughs> they know that uh, but as, as far as anyone knows, yeah. Alabama is one and one, and one of them was an Iron Bowl win, and one of them is losing the ULM. That's, that's about right. Just imagining a person like that, like, what podcast are you listening to on a bus? Like, oh, it's a college football podcast. Like, ah, oh, who do they think is going to win in the Iron Bowl? The what? The what? The who? The what? <laughs> the what? Is Eastern Michigan in that one? They're they the, talk about them a lot. They talk about the Grayfield a ton. <laughs> So I did. I did see someone suggest today that the uh, the Buffalo Eastern Michigan game should be an annual rivalry, and they should play it somewhere in South Ontario. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I saw that too. Mm. Yeah, because that's like the middle. That's the middle spot. Yeah, I like. Yeah. I like this for them, actually. When they get to Friday, Friday at eleven a.m., like we're gonna have to just sit down and and, and just enjoy some leftovers because basically at Friday at eleven a.m. It is it is it is gonna hit you in the face. Cause at the same time we have Iowa, Nebraska, Miami, Boston College on ABC. Sorry, Iowa Nebraska's on CBS. <laughs> what? You get this CBS you're, you're your there? national option. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Farmageddon. From Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, well, Farmageddon is, is Iowa State, K State, but yes. I'm sorry. The Confrontation. The confrontation. Oh, so yes, CBS is showing Iowa, Nebraska. ABC is showing Miami at Boston College. All right, uh, for ESPN Miami, ESPN is showing Memphis at Temple. Yes, oh, right, keep going. CBS Sports, Ohio at Akron, which might be competitive, and then on Fox, TCU at Oklahoma. And then there's one more. Oh, sorry, and Toledo and Central Michigan at, on ESPNU. Yeah. That way, that one actually sounds like a fun one. As far as like non sickos activity just watching a good football game ignoring the logos on the helmets toledo as cmu is probably the best game I, I i would probably agree with that uh miami and boston college are two evenly matched teams i'm gonna say that <laughs> i'm gonna say God, those words it, we are never getting on lebitard <laughs> no, 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 no i'm gonna say this miami at boston college feels incredibly dumb 
and they're gonna show yeah. the, oh yeah they're gonna show the flutie hail mary like 20 times oh it's gonna be cold too <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be oh yeah so weather is also an issue here because in nebraska it might be snowing yeah and, and people in our and people in our discord are saying iowa nebraska the over under is at 26 and the, it, like the temperature is gonna be like 30 <laughs> so like is <laughs> will will the over under get above the temperature <laughs> Or will the point be How stuff? many overs has no, Iowa I, hit this year? I, I don't think. I thought it was none. I don't. I, uh, no, they, they've hit. They've hit one or two. Didn't they hit the over in the one game where they scored like forty points somehow? They, they, yeah, they, they hit. They hit the over against Western. Yeah. Western Michigan, yes. But but otherwise, and here's the thing: I've been the one arguing the last couple weeks, being like, "They'll hit the over this week. This is the week, guys. This is the week they hit the over." I'm fucking done with it. No. Nope. Under under twenty six. I'm take. I I under. It's done. Line go down. Yep. I I can't. It is known. It is known. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. My my question about Iowa Nebraska is: Should I play some sort of drinking game? And if so, what should I play? Like punts? Every punt I drink? Or, no, because you're going to die. Like yeah. Do you want to die, Arthur? Well, got- I mean, no. You can craft something where it's not. You don't drink that much every punt, but you do drink. I mean, I don't know. I'm Ooh, just a trying shot to shot of corn milkshake every time they punt. I've had corn ice cream before. It's not bad, but the idea of corn milkshake just Oh, whole milk as God intended. Oh, Beth, I have like a really cursed thought based on your mm-hmm. described Thanksgiving egg dish. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is that, but custard, and then you make it into ice cream. You definitely could yeah, you totally do that with this thing. I, oh my God. I, I didn't. Y'all frighten me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, you know what? We were ultimately born in cannibals. Mm-hmm. That's true. We are, we, cannibals is in the system. I, I don't – okay, so our teams that we're looking at, Nebraska needs to be Iowa to be bowl eligible. I don't think that's going to happen even on the road, even with Iowa on the road, even in Lincoln. I don't think that's going to happen. Then TCU on the road has to win at Oklahoma. Good luck. Yikes. Yeah, I it, – I don't, I don't know. It's going to – I mean, Oklahoma's been kind of – I don't know. I, I maybe, but it's in Norman. I, I don't yeah. know about that. We'll see. This could be. This could it be. It worked out great Oklahoma. for us. Well, Nebraska fans, when you guys end up winning and getting a bowl, you're welcome to pay five dollars a month to join our Discord and our Patreon and come <laughs> yell at me in person. Use your winnings from betting the over. Yep. Just yes. Come- join join our Patreon and talk to me about how wrong my corn casserole is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, tell me how much you hate or love black licorice, because tonight I lit the time our timeline on fire by saying that black licorice is great. Because there are ads during Maction for licorice.com, not a sponsor, and they all they do is just sell licorice. <laughs> That's what it says on the tin. Uh, for five dollars a month, you can join us at our Patreon. We're gonna have we have tons of stuff coming up for bowl season. We do lots of fun stuff for that. So come and talk to us, join us, holler during games. It's a great time of year to join in if you haven't been so far. You also get access to our paywall Substack posts. You also get access to Commission's Corner. Commission just released a great episode about the 1983 Oregon Oregon State game, the Toilet Bowl, the Donut Bowl, which ended zero zero. It's a great episode. Go to our merch store at sickoscommittee.org. Buy something for someone you love, or point people there and tell them, "Hey, I want this for Christmas." Because opening that on Christmas morning is an image I have in my head that I just want to see replicated. Shout out to Message Board Geniuses Podcast. They've been having a great time. The meltdowns <laughs> last weekend were amazing. The Auburn meltdowns were beautiful. Also, we have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. We have our Substack where we do our sicko synopsis every week. And as always, if you love comfy collegiate apparel, go to Homefield. We have offer code yes, ha 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 yes. That's three hots for 15% off. But for this week, we do have our Black Friday code. We have a Black Friday link that you will click on whenever we post a home field stuff. And you offer code. What's the offer code for Black Friday? I believe it's Black Friday. It's Black Friday. Perfect. Yeah. So use offer code Black Friday and you get a big discount on all the stuff at home field. What is it? 25%? 20%. 20%. It's the 20%. best sale of the year, guys. It is the best sale of the year. Yes. So. I have already put it in an order. I'm getting my blue two lane hoodie. Finally, finally like bit off for that. So 
if you need to get things for loved ones who are vaguely affiliated with college football, just get them that. And if they don't like it, get them a Blast of the Burrow shirt because everyone loves fucking loves Blast of the Burrow. No one's going to be like, I don't want a shirt with a donkey with a stick of dynamite in its mouth on it. Yeah. Howdy, folks. <laughs> Howdy. And then, of course, this is a separate deal. We have our weekly Sicko shirt showdown, our last regular season game of the year. And our, for our final Hawaii test, we have the sassy green and orange Colorado State Ram and the classic Hawaii Rainbows logo, which is one of my favorites. Yeah, that looks great. That so, Rainbows, uh, that Rainbow uh, Warriors like helmet. I actually purchased that one. I've been meaning to get that one for a while. So again, yeah. I, I'm just putting these shirt showdowns to try to get discounts on shirts that I want. But you know, <laughs> uh, my wife already has the sassy Ram Colorado State one. Uh, the sassy Ram is so good. It is so good. It's just like a ton of attitude. You got you got the rainbow, the actual rainbow yeah. versus the sassiest animal I've I ever mean, seen. You know, this is my week. It is. It is our last Hawaii test of the year. Uh, so definitely there. They're, you know, the regular season game, I, I know there's still the Army Navy game left. So it's like I just I had to put like final Hawaii test because I didn't want like Army and Navy people <laughs> in our replies like, well, actually, the last game of the year. <laughs> No, that's, they have access that's, to drones. That's postseason football. It's fine. Sure. Our Army Navy is the real national championship. I mean, really I mean, technically, that's going to be an American conference, non-conference game next year because it's going to be great. Don't mean anything. So yeah, but do your shopping now for home field. Get yourself something. Get something for someone you love. Get something for someone you hate. I don't care. Just use our link. We're going back to Friday. Now, the real game of the day for me on this one. Is at 2.30 p.m. It's UTSA at Tulane on ABC. This is this this is sets up one of these teams is going to the American Championship, the other is not. That's what this sets up. And it it's is a semifinal. It, it's great. Like this is I'm so excited for this because both teams are mostly healthy. We're gonna see both teams sort of doing what they do best. And this is the like this is not can you call this like the hipster game of the week? Is this is this hipstery? A little bit, but it's on. It's like, on ABC. It's, it's on ABC. It's, on a, it's only on ABC because it's on Friday, though. That's fine. More people. I, I'm glad people are going to watch this game. I hope. So. I am too. Like that. that so mm-hmm. I, I do not mean that as a criticism. I'm just saying, like, e- ABC is not cool enough to make this an ABC game if it's not a holiday weekend and they don't need the inventory. That's all Agreed. I'm saying. This is Agreed. a knock on ABC, not on this game. This game is a banger. Because otherwise, they're going to sh- they're showing whatever Christmas specials. This is this books. this game. I mean, it's it's my hometown versus where I currently live, so it's 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 kind of. And then my wife is is a UTSA alum, so there's there's you know maybe a little bit of house divided for commish a little bit here. I like that a little a little high, house divided sickos committee podcast. I wonder who the 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 six year old kiddo will pick. This should be. Fun. I mean. It's tough because, like, some of those Rowdy the Roadrunner logos are great. I know. He has a UTSA shirt. He has a Tulane shirt. Then maybe I'll just cut him in half and make the kiddo support both. <laughs> <laughs> the world's the same- only UTSA Tulane house divided jersey. Uh, is- yeah. I mean, it could happen. I mean, now they're conference rivals. So this, this is the first year. And then they're, this is, I, I, I was trying to find a way to, to go back to New Orleans for Thanksgiving. But my uh, my dad's gonna be in Houston, so I would not have a. Well, I mean, I could stop in Houston and take his keys. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Yeah. <laughs> could be. I I, I mean, random human trip. I don't know where. Leave uh, it tomorrow for you guys. That's gonna be a gr- a great game. Uh, at the same time, for your second screen, definitely catch Utah State, New Mexico. Utah State is this is like their bowl win. If they get when they get in the bowl, if they win this one, and New Mexico just tore apart. Fresno State. So who the fuck knows what New Mexico is doing? Also, we have another Mountain West banger at the same time, which is Air Force at Boise State. One of these teams makes it into the bowl, basically makes it into the title game. Air Force is on a three-game skit at this point, and Boise seems to have found some life. This one is interesting in terms of just like general narrative because Air Force has looked so good for so long, and then just like Army did something to they, it. They've They've fallen apart. They've lost three in a row, right? Yes, three in a row. So they lost to Army, Hawaii, and then UNLV last week. Mm-hmm. And now they have to go to the, the Smurf turf. That's, to go, that's, that's a big, to that's go, a big ask. To go face a crazy reinvigorated Boise team 
that just fired their coach, and they have, I, I don't, I don't know, like they, they spooked all the Broncos in like the stable, and they're all like jumping up around <laughs> because it's, I don't know, and the boys is alive for the Mountain West title game. This should be a fun one. Then at the same time, number nine Missouri at Arkansas, something we all expected this year. Yeah. To be and and again, this is on CBS. This is this is the SEC on CBS, and this is how the SEC on CBS is going out, which is Missouri and Arkansas. Yeah, this has only been played fourteen times. It's only been played fourteen times. This trophy is 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 crazy looking too. They have to like wheel it wheel it out with like a cart. I I don't know how many. Always oh, a good start. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can get the cart photo. Oh, because it's because it's because it's oh oh it's I see the, this. Yeah, it's like both states stacked on top of each other. I think okay. like oh, Arkansas it's a, has it's a hat trophy. Arkansas has two different trophies where it's just like state outlines stacked on each other. They have the boot with LSU where it's the Arkansas stacked on top of LSU, uh, Louisiana, and then they have the battle line trophy on this cart where it's the outline. Of Missouri stacked is on it, top of Arkansas. According is, to this, it weighs more than 180 pounds. Okay, we is gotta, it, okay, gotta is, get away. Is there like plexiglass in there or is it just the outline? It just like, looks like the outline. Okay, it's not like glass. To, okay, for a second, it looked like, like an acrylic glass. I was like, this looks cheap. The, the, See, no, I'm just cool. envisioning like modular this, boot and battle line trophy. So then you can like assemble it and disassemble it depending on which states you currently have possession of. Yes. Uh, well, I, should... I like the idea of Arkansas maintaining a trophy for every like state flagship across the entire country. <laughs> and then just like seeing how many pieces of the United States they can put together as a puzzle. Mm. Uh, I dropped a picture of Sam Pittman looking very pleased with both trophies on either side of him. Behold my throne. The, this, the battle line trophy is very weird as hell. The first game that they ever played against each other was in 1906. Then uh, okay. a little bit of a gap, 1944. Then a little bit of a gap, 1963. Then about a 40-year gap, 2003. Uh, and then a five-year gap, 2008. And then they both wound up in the SEC in 2014. And they've pretty much almost played every year since then. But in but in different divisions because yes. once again Missouri was in the East. I love how one of these like took place the battle line it took place in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. It was great. Sure, it's great. Other games that day on Friday, the Land Grant Trophy is coming to Ford Field. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I gotta see how big the openings are at Ford Field because in my mind the Land Grant Trophy is somewhere between 100 and 200 feet tall and weighs between 2 and 3 tons so it's going to be hard to get in one of those like you know, loading bay doors. It may be smaller than that. I'm not sure. Don't tell me. I just want to take a second to remind everybody about how salty everyone was that this game is at 6.30pm in Michigan on a Friday. Penn State fans, very angry about being forced to play on Friday. You know in what? Det in Detroit. Die mad. Well, it was supposed to be in East Lansing, and they were like, let's not do this outside. Cowards. Now you kids go outside to play with your footballs because you're not allowed to throw them around Mima's curio cabinet. I feel like Ford Field is built in such a way that there's probably some curio cabinets down there. Yeah, I'm guaranteed. Texas second. I mean, the land grant trophy for starters. I'm about to say that that is, they're, <laughs> they're literally wheeling one in there. Texas second to Texas is at the same time on ABC. This I refuse to watch. I, I put this, this game makes in me nauseous. This game makes me nauseous. I put this in here for you. I'm going to say this. Say it, it. Say it. It feels like the old Texas would mess this one up, but this mm -hmm. Texas, uh, this version of Texas, won't. I just I this disagree. this time Lucy won't pick up the football. Charlie Brown. This this game is tech comes tech always plays this game like they're insane. Should be fun and. And this I mean, is, it's not like it's the last Big Twelve game ever. I'm gonna, th I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna throw up thinking about this game. Well, I, I mean, refuse to watch. They this still game. have the Big Twelve title game, but the last Big Twelve game ever for the Red Raiders. I mean, we, we haven't covered the Big Twelve tiebreakers because I don't do math like that. The, uh, the Big I, Twelve tiebreakers at this point are like. Are so you telling me that I tweeted and lied that we would go all, all, all over 128 mathematical scenarios for this? 
on hey, I was told Iowa State is still alive, and I refuse to look further. That's yeah. <laughs> which, which one of the tiebreakers is what is the nearest Whataburger? That's oh yeah. We're, now that's yeah. We get from far enough down, and it's like oh we we have a knife fight at a Bucky's to decide who gets to go to the uh, Big Twelve title game. Ooh, I want that one. I was gonna say that's not fair to West Virginia. I haven't gotten past Scrabble score. Ooh, I see, but then it depends on how you place it. But I guess Texas Tech would always be bigger than Texas too. That's unfortunate. The X gives Texas an advantage. You get that triple letter score. And then Oregon State at Oregon. Now, have they figured out their shit yet for next year? Or was it just Wazoo that's figured so out their shit? They, they're in talks that they're going to work something out, but nothing has been planned yet. But they're talking. So they're talking to try to set that up. I, I love how, like, you know, Wazoo and Washington, they agreed to uh, a further series through 2028. Oregon State and Oregon are like, yeah, we're trying to work something out to, to, to extend the series. We want to do that. But Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are just like, fuck you. I am not talking to your ass <laughs> anymore. I'm uh, done with your oh, ass. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's be real clear here. It's mostly Oklahoma State going fuck you. And I, I don't blame them. I, because I don't blame if I, if I, I had won 20 it. games out of 100 in a series, I would also tell – if I had the chance to tell someone to fuck off, <laughs> I would do it too. That There's no reason for them to be like, oh, no, please, let's get our yearly ass kicking. No, man, fuck you. <laughs> I'm not legally required to play you anymore. Get yeah, we're leaving with the belt. We're leaving with yes. the belt. That's right. You can come back with better numbers. I'm not they, doing this shit. Never, ever, you left. You don't get to keep keeping your shit at my house. It's in the yard. Yes. Come get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I put it in the box in the front yard. Right. The weather comes. I don't give a shit. I, I, bro- anymore. I broke down the goalpost. Take that shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Done. <laughs> a great way to finish Friday night. And then we get into our Saturday slate. We open at 11 a.m., and I'm going to list the games off so we can get some, just some ideas here. Houston at UCF, with UCF needing this for a bowl. Indiana at Purdue, the old oaken bucket with no stakes whatsoever. Except the bucket. Kentucky at Louisville for the Governor's Cup. That's the ABC game. So it turns that bucket into stakes. Miami, Ohio at Ball State. Navy at SMU needing this for the bowl. Pitt at Duke. On the ACC network. It's perfect. That, 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 Tro- that game is perfect for the ACC network. At last at noon mm-hmm. where we belong. Yes. Uh, Troy at Southern Miss. Middle Tennessee at Sam Houston. I'm still working on getting down there for that one. Northern Illinois at Kent State. Northern Illinois did that for a bowl. And then the battle for the U. UMass at UConn. Which pick girl will be in attendance. I am attending for the second year in a row, actually. I was at UConn UMass at Rentschler last year as well. I think you need to call yourself an alumna of now of this game. It is going to be my second rivalry that I have seen in both stadiums after the brawl. The, she is the official historian of the Battle for the U mm-hmm. for two iterations of it. Um, yes, Pit Dad is going to this game with me, as is Obnoxiously Pit Boyfriend. It is going to be Ooh. his second college football game ever after 2016 Pit Syracuse, aka 7661. We can only hope that this competition is as high scoring. This this might be a little different. Just a little bit. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be six to one. You're going to take off the first digit. Uh, also, there's a good chance that it's going to be so cold yeah. and so windy. Yeah. It's supposed to be like almost 40. That's pretty warm for well, Massachusetts fine. in yeah, November. It's bad. fine. Is this at McGurk? Mm-hmm. Or however that's yeah, pronounced? McGurk. 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 I think it's McGurk. McGurk. I mean, 40s is Pennsylvania out. Yeah. So you'll be fine. It'll be fine. So that's our morning slate. Indiana at Purdue calls to me, Kamish. It does? Because it is because it is a rivalry with the only stakes being the trophy and the state. No one's playing for a bowl. Nope. Both teams are like, curse this season. Yeah. And all I want to do is just get one last punch in. All I want is that damn bucket. I, yep. All I want is the old oaken bucket. I think we okay, read, poem. Didn't we didn't we read the poem last year on that one? I think uh, I yes. Beth did. And yeah. I, I cut I, in the I music. Very much yeah, did. you cut in the music. Yeah, I it cut was great. the music. It was a great poem. Can we can we do another thing because uh, one of our our Discord folks uh, said to not insult like the shrimp cocktail from St. Elmo's, which I, I'm not insulting the shrimp cocktail. I, okay. I I will eat it. And can we put like the St. Elmo's shrimp cocktail inside the old oaken bucket? 
yeah, and, and eat some out of that. I, I would like to do that. Sure. Probably some ice as well, but yeah, of course. You know, gotta keep it, my, gotta keep it cool. Shrimp co- no, shrimp cocktail is best served at like sixty no. degrees. No, that's the no. That's a good. That's a good tip for shrimp mm-hmm. cocktail. Don't that eat. seems like a food safety issue. Okay. Let me just. That's Google more how like sixty degrees is. That's more like the parody poem of the old oaken bucket, as revised by the Board of Health that I read on this podcast once. Yeah, don't have your shrimp at fifteen degrees Celsius. No, that's not that's ideal. Not, not ideal. Like that. No, no, Jordan, no. You know, can you, can you believe I've never taken like a food handling or safety class? I can one hundred percent believe that. Can you imagine I, that. I, I, I'm going to take one of those. I, I worked in the food service industry for probably about a decade, so yeah, I can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so, sell me on Pit at Duke. It's just it's just perfect ACC network like noon background music. Last year, this was the pigeon game, wasn't it? I believe so, yes. Yeah, but that, that, was that was at Heinz That was at Heinz Field where the field was just covered in pigeons. <laughs> it's so great. Which honestly is pretty good shape for November. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't believe that uh, Duke allows pigeons on their campus, so that won't be an issue. No. <laughs> they're too they're they're too ethnic. <laughs> I like the, the, probably, well, I think the bigger problem is that, as we all know, pigeons are spies for the papacy. Woke yeah. pigeons. Uh-huh. Fucking woke pigeons at Duke. Birds I mean, it is real. Yeah, it is a well-known fact that birds are not real, and yeah. they are, in fact, government drones. That's government why they sit drones. on telephone wires. They're charging. Yep. No, a new theory. Pigeons are real, but they're all liberals. <laughs> <laughs> they're always looking for handouts. Uh, yeah, but- there we go. <laughs> uh, exactly. Right. <laughs> oh, fucking, li- <laughs> fucking liberals. <laughs> Looking for handouts. Liberal pigeons. (laughs) What do you think they're always doing on those statues, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shitting on my history. Stop. (laughs) It's great. We also have Florida Atlantic at Rice for a bull eligible rice. Rice is decently high up in APR. They are not like high enough that I would. They're 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 tied for the top APR. Okay. Uh, so so I APR. found out also that, that if the t- if you're tied, Wait, no, actually, you third. go back. Okay. Third period. So what yeah, happens it's, if it's, you're tied? You have to go back year by year until the tie breaks. It's Minnesota and Wake that are tied. Minnesota for first and Wake. Oh, correctly. Um, Wake has to beat Syracuse to get to five wins to do that. But Minnesota is at nine ninety two, along with Wake at nine ninety two. Rice is nine eighty seven. Right behind them is Mississippi State. So at so nine eighty five. Well, can, so so can, can, on this. Can, can, go ahead. Go for it. So I'll, here's what I'll say. Right now, I would very, very strongly recommend winning a sixth game. Yeah. Because the way the bad, the way everything's working out, it's like I don't even know if we're going to have. Like no. we could, but again, all of these teams are behind James Madison and Jacksonville State anyway. I would strongly recommend winning that that sixth game, and I don't think we even have to talk about APR right now because you know, I I think it's definitely less than 50% odds that a team gets in on APR. I love looking at the APR list because there are just some things in here that make no goddamn sense to me. Like some jokes fall apart really quickly. Like in the top 10 of APR are schools like Dartmouth. Columbia is the best APR in the country. And then schools like Clemson, Alabama and Ole Miss in Cincinnati. Sure. So APR is not really a measure of like how smart you are, or, no, like course, how yeah. academically it's just based on like, are you kind of graduating the players that you bring in? So like, yes, I would expect like the Ivies to be very, very high up in that because just by the nature of the schools, right. I would assume that a lot of people that get in, in the first place or there are set up to go through and graduate. And it's not really the kind of thing where you're going to be, I would I would assume at least given the nature of athletics there you're not going to be like losing a lot of people to going pro. Or I'm going to tell I'm going to tell you right now or, that, or whatnot. that literally no one fails out of Ivy League school like that because yeah, that looks yeah. so badly against them they will drag your ass through graduation no matter what. Yeah, but I mean like basically the areas where you see really low APR tends to be schools that just don't have the resources to basically like keep kids eligible, keep them getting good grades, keep them passing. Um, and then also teams that just have a lot of turnover. And so like, if you have a team that has kind of cycled through some coaches, had a lot of transfers leave, then the APR situation can get rough just because you, you just, because you don't have that continuity, you don't have a bunch of players going through the program and graduating. Mm-hmm. Uh, just j- make you feel better, guys. Uh, Pitt and Duke, same APR. Hmm. Same APR as Virginia. Hmm. 
And a better APR than Stanford. Ooh. Hey. Duke better than Stanford. You heard it here first. Yeah. Also, at that same time, 1 p.m., we got Tulsa at East Carolina. Again, a game that's just for fun. I don't know. Like These schools have history. They have history. I just don't know what it is. I mean, it's a power the one, is a hurricane. I mean, that's traditionally bad for pirates. Probably. But this hurricane this hurricane's very weak. I mean, it's golden, uh, so I don't know. The 1 p.m. game we got to talk about is on the CW, and it's Wake Forest at Syracuse. Syracuse for a bowl game. Guys, of this Of course we have to talk about it. This, it's on the this CW. One's gonna get, this one's going to fucking come off the rails, and I'm so excited. I, look, because, holy shit. I don't, I don't know what Syracuse is going to do. Like, like, they just fired Dino. And then the whoever's taking over as the interim. Nunzio. It's Nunzio company. Yeah, Nunzio. Yeah, like Nunzio taking over as the interim. Like, is he going to still run all this stuff with this tight end? Like, because they're so banged up. I don't know what Qs can do offensively. And and what's what's Wake going to do? But I have no idea. But I, I can't wait to find out. Only on the CW. Only on the CW. Only on the CW. I have to do that we on will, every tweet. About we will CW. watch this game and we will reach out a very, very, very long stick. And every once in a while we will poke just to see what happens. That's this game. Yes. Uh, UAB and no- at North Texas, two teams with no defense and nothing to play for. This is going to be like 70 to 60. Over under on uh, oh it's it's gonna be it like over under's gotta be like a hundred it gets this is gonna be silly sloppy I'm super excited for this over under a hundred it's gonna be so great it's gonna be awesome is that the actual over hundred hold up no no it's it's a hundred and seven uh, seventy three and a half oh wait, yeah, I, close I, enough hammer that fucking over folks oh man that is that is gambling advice my god not- that like look both teams can't make a bowl they don't have apr whatever it's just gonna be nothing but it's it's haymakers only mode just mm-hmm. just fucking throw it deep let's go points for the points god now someone that does have something to play for georgia state at old dominion old dominion needs us for a bowl game odu has been very spicy i'm looking forward to this because i do actually georgia state's been on such a slide late after like their big start that i'm not sure where the slide stops so Georgia Georgia State beat the Cajuns, then they lost to Georgia Southern, lost to James Madison, lost to App State, gave up eight touchdowns to Jaden Daniels last week, uh, which okay, was, but it, it's Jaden Daniels. It's Jaden. It's Jaden fucking Daniels, right? But uh, yeah, like six touchdowns. Jaden Daniels, week. who's so good, he's showing up on our Detmer list just on touchdowns alone. Yes, Woo! like like the yeah. fact Whoa. that the fact that he's thrown like two interceptions is not hurting him enough. I look, look. Last week, Jaden Daniels against Georgia, uh, Georgia State, had, he had five incompletions and he had six touchdown passes. He threw, he threw for four hundred thirteen yards, uh, and then he ran for almost like a hundred. Ran for ninety six on ten carries. It's <laughs> just, yeah. Um, if ODU can pull this one off, uh, they get the ball eligibility. ODU's been very spicy. Uh, they've been a lot of fun. They play crazy games. I don't think there's any way possible that this game is is normal at all. Uh, it no. should be fun. San Jose State at UNLV on Mountain West Network, wherever we're calling that, Mountain West Video. I It sucks that this one got relegated there because this game should be pretty good. San Jose State has looked better yeah, lately. Admittable. But UNLV is right now on top of the Mountain West and will be going to the Mountain West title game. which I, is, I believe so, right? I mean, yeah, they're, I think they're I think they're locked in. Unless, but, unless something gets really stupid, I think. Okay, but in. San Jose State is five and two in the Mountain West. UNLV is six and one in the Mountain West. There may be a tiebreaker to get San Jose State in. I don't know. I don't know if they're just eliminated. If, uh, I, I will say if if everything crumbles ahead of them, I think UNLV is still playing for a shot at NY six. Okay, a lot would have to go right, but that is still in play. Uh, here are some tiebreaker scenarios, real fast. I got it here, real fast. If UNLV beats San Jose State, it hosts the winner of Air Force Boise game in the Mountain West Championship. If San Jose State beats UNLV, there will be a three-way tie between UNLV, San Jose State, and the winner of Air Force Boise State. The three-team round-robin tiebreaker wouldn't break either tie. The selection computer rankings will identify the two highest-ranked teams to participate in the championship game. And then once that's uh, once that's identified, the head-to-head result will determine the host. 
If the teams did not play each other in the regular season, the highest ranked team, the computer rankings will host the game. Uh, the, num- the, the, oh, the computers I've seen like UNLV a lot. So I feel like they're going to at least get in that one. We'll see what happens, though. The Battle of the Bayou. Oh, yeah. Louisiana Monroe versus Louisiana Lafayette. Lafayette needs this for a bowl game, which means the ULM, ULM has the chance to do the thing. Stop, can, just kneecap the rivals. You, you remember when ULM was 2-0? That was so great. Now they're I remember when Vandy was 2-0, too. Yeah, ULM and Vandy, uh, you know, partners at 2-0. So uh, the resident Cajun fan, Raging Cajun fan, uh, wants me to sing the Cajuns fight song if if the Cajuns win. I'm like, so I'm probably going to sing the Cajuns fight song. Uh, then, then Clyde in our Discord wants me to do the Cajun man voice all next podcast. Not all I, next podcast. Good uh, God. Just, ten, just ten just, minutes worth. Like, a, like I can pop in every now and then with the Cajun man. Uh, That's fine. Yeah. If I have something, you know, I every now and then I could, I could definitely just throw in a little interruption. But you know, really, uh, <laughs> we can. I think, I think the Cajuns are going to win this one, and and I'm, I'm going to be doing ridiculous Cajun voice uh, next podcast. Stay tuned for that. But there's a chance. There's always a chance because I, sure. keeping your rival out of a bowl game I mean, is the kind of spite we need sometimes. I mean, look, Terry will play the rivals close. I mean, one one year when like they went 13 to 1, it was 21-16, like yes it was. Uh, so who knows? And and this could be Terry's farewell. I don't know. I I don't have any sources or anything like that, but let's see. On ESPN Plus only, unfortunately. Not not getting the NFL network spot this week. No, no. It's okay. I, we didn't even talk about the fucking like Black Friday NFL football game trying to encroach upon our beloved college football. Fuck that. There, there's one. NFL fuck know. off. Thank you. It's the Jets and who? The Jets. Okay, they're trying to entice the sickos. I, I love it. Like, uh, six, six people who are very much into football, and I ask who like an NFL team is playing on, on Friday. We're like, I don't fucking know. Uh, Arkansas State at Marshall. Marshall needs this for bowl eligibility at two thirty. Arkansas State, who just hung 77 on Texas State. So, oh my God. Marshall's been looking really bad lately, too. Beth is getting really happy about it. Beth's going from ear to ear and just being like, kill shot, kill shot, do the thing mm-hmm. in them. Yep. Hey, hey, Get them, bite their heads. Beth, you missed this last podcast. Um, oh. how, did, how does this make you feel? Uh, Chad Pennington's son is the quarterback for Marshall. Oh, God. That's I'm crumbling great. to dust before your eyes. I saw Chad Pennington play for Marshall in person mm-hmm. more than once. Go see his son now, too. <laughs> She's so... God, just like, I hate this. It, Jordan, <laughs> I hate if, this. if looks could kill, your head would have exploded there. <laughs> oh, like, sc- like, in, like scanners. So yeah, oh, yeah. One, like of my college, one of my college classmates told me that he was very excited to learn that i was middle-aged this week so like it's already been a rough oh, one dude. do you need me to uh, go fight a teenager for you beth maybe okay god knows i don't want to slip a disc or something <laughs> i was gonna say opg who do you think our first one is gonna of these are is gonna be oh god i mean cam rising is in his seventh year of college and that feels weird too <laughs> It's not the same thing. I mean, but. Cam Rising. Cam Rising was at Texas when Tom Herman was there. That's all you got. Like, that's all you got. Just said. That's insane. Coming back for another year, baby. Glue, they're gonna glue. They're gonna glue them back together. Like the land grant trophy. <laughs> what part fell off? Was it the little dude? I don't know. The, the, let's just keep like m- mysteriously adding parts in our graphic to see if anybody. I'm. S- I'll do. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Please do. Yeah, make more knickknacks. How about Arizona at Arizona State at 2.30? Hell yeah. Y'all, this one, again, is another rivalry that just is ugly and they hate each other. Mm-hmm. And this is another one where Arizona State is having the year. Yeah. They're doing great. Yeah. Arizona well, you State know, you mean, is. You mean Arizona. Arizona. Oh, Arizona's having the year. Yeah. Arizona State is like claw- clawing back to like something. With their young hotshot coach? No. Three and eight, but they're banged up to hell. But they do have but, the law firm. But but they've won 
at least one notable game this year, which I don't think they could say that for the last couple yeah, of years. True. They, uh, they scared the crap out of Washington, too. Also, remember that during the COVID season, this was the game that Arizona State won 70 to 7. Oh, yeah. Arizona. So I ain't forgot that. Yeah, so this this feels like a we're going to turn the screws on as hard as humanly this, possible and make you suffer. This game to me feels like the the desert version of the Egg Bowl. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. This is. I, this I'd argue one. historically it's exactly that. Yeah. It. It. This. Mm-hmm. This one feels like the definitely the you know the the Western version of the Egg Bowl, maybe the Western Omelet Bowl, uh, but you know really something like the that. The territorial Egg Cup. Oh, nice! Ooh, I like very that. nice. Yeah, I I am posting a picture in the chat from Dr. Seuss that reminds me of Arizona, Arizona State. Every time I look at it, perfect. <laughs> yep, it, it, it'll make it no sense perfect. in our Discord. Join the Discord to see this picture. Uh, it, this picture is worth five bucks of of no contact <laughs> sure. done on its own. BYU needs to be Oklahoma State to be bowl eligible. Good luck. Uh, shout out to uh, Mike. One of our committee members, the BYU fan, is actually going to be Jody? there. Oh, uh, uh, for for this one. Oh, because uh, he lives in Oklahoma, doesn't he? That's yeah, right he now. lives in. I think he lives in Tulsa, so he's going to yeah. be heading over to Stillwater, which is not that far. Uh, it's not like he has to go to Oklahoma Panhandle State. A shout out! A shout out to those guys. They they had a decent season. Those yep. Aggies had a decent season. That's right. I think Delaware Valley is still on top of that list. Yeah. Georgia Southern and App State. This is a traditional rivalry. Oh God. Mm-hmm. And this is a lot of hate from a lot of years of FCS one two a ball, and that this is again a thing is beautiful and glorious. Georgia Southern going up to App State is also amazing. I love this. Uh, I love this. Like this, the name of the rivalry like r- is really good for me. What is it? Deeper than hate. Ooh, Ooh yeah. I've forgotten that. Some good stuff right there. Very. Like a metal album. Yeah. Would you describe Maryland at Rutgers as deeper than hate? Yes. <laughs> yes. They they deeper hate that hate they're stuck too. with each other. <laughs> deeper than hate too. They actually, they're like, damn it, Big Ten, why did you put us together? <laughs> yeah, like no, actually, I like this one as sort of a like pit marshal kind of thing where it's like, hey, we both hate that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I I feel like this this look like, I Rutgers, I love you. Maryland, I love you. But I feel like this is like the rivalry that you put at the kitty table at Thanksgiving. Ooh, that's I have been saying that mean all episode. I don't I don't think it's like mean, but it's just like they hate to be together, but they're like kids in the Big Ten. So they're stuck together and the parents in the Big Ten force them together. So that no. that's what I feel like it is. Hold your sister's no. hand. Yeah. He's touching me. I know. For God's sakes, it's it's the uh, Home Alone kid that pees in the bed uh, versus you know Kevin McAllister. Right now, I don't, I don't know. I don't, like, I'm not saying who is USC who. and UCLA the adopted children who the parents like more. Yes, mm. that's exactly what they are. <laughs> that's what it feels like. They they were you adopt the cool kids. Would you describe Northwestern at Illinois as deeper than hate? Because Illinois needs to win this game to be bowl eligible. Northwestern's already there. A sentence that is true in this, this year. My God. I never if, would have even. If Northwestern lost to Purdue, we would have got a five and six, five and six game. Yep. Ugh, like, I can't believe we didn't get one of those this year. But I, know. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. This is the land of Lincoln, and they play for, like, Lincoln's hat trophy, hat, which, yeah. is, which is weird. Because it's a hat. But it's on like a wooden block, and then everybody tries to wear the you hat. Can't wear it. But it, they put the block on their head, and it just doesn't work. They did move the Commonwealth Cup to the ACC Network as well, which Woo-hoo! this year, which this year feels appropriate for the Commonwealth Cup. Yes, I Virginia wish the Tech needs to win Cup, this game. I wish this would have been on the CW. Yeah, yeah so I was this, thinking this felt CW. Virgi- Virginia felt... Tech does not hope. Was no, not I know CW. Virginia Tech wants to win this one uh, for sure because they get bowl eligibility if they win it. Uh, this is also one of those incredibly lopsided rivalries. Like mm-hmm. Virginia has one win in this rivalry the last 20 years, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's it's very one-sided. Minnesota, you need to win against Wisconsin at home. At home in Minnesota, sorry. To be bowl eligible as well. That should be fine. This, also, acquiring the axe is always important. Yes, is. you need the axe. I, it's it's this, probably one of my favorite rivalry trophies. Just the ridiculous axe. Like, just, just all of these players... 
running, celebrating. I think there was a kicker last name like Lloyd or something in like 2003. Mm-hmm. Hits the winning field goal and just like runs across the Metrodome to go grab the freaking axe just to go insane. And that's like burned in my memory. I, I love this. How can you not love a giant axe for a rivalry trophy? This this trophy is, is so awesome. And it's not I, attached to anything. That's the best part. No. Because like the Stanford axe is cool, yeah. but it doesn't have a hand it doesn't have like it's, a handle on, to it. Like it's the just... Stanford axe is like mounted on a plaque on yeah. like some wood. This is like an actual fucking axe you can swing. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. 3 p.m. on Fox, the Apple yeah. Cup. Minnesota needs this for a win. Uh you said the Apple Cup. I apologize. And yeah, Washington State needs that to win it's a bowl game as well. Washington State, you have a chance to do the thing. I don't love that this is a noon West Coast game. Like yeah. it's in Seattle, so that cuts down on the odds oh, of chaos 1 PM. anyway. One, what, 1, 1 PM, PM West Coast, but yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot that we observe God's time in the. Yeah. Still, that's uh, one PM is basically noon. Linear time was a mistake. This this should have been like this should be a night game. Yes, this should kick at like seven West Coast time. Yeah. And it should be raining tax mm-hmm. and it should be, you know, it should be sleeting or something. Yeah. No, this By is, the end of the game, it will be night. Yeah, that's true. Uh, this, you got, you got a chance to do the thing here at Washington State. You kick them out on their way out. Oregon State, mm-hmm. you have this chance to do the exact same thing. Just do the, do the thing. Be, le- be legends. Jacksonville okay, State. Be legends. Jacksonville State at New Mexico State. This should be a very good game. Banger. Like a really, like a really good game because Jacksonville mm-hmm. State just likes to run over their opponents. Yeah. They're, they're so does New Mexico State ask Auburn? Exactly. And so <laughs> this is this is just going to be a slugfest. This should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Keep everyone alive. Please, New Mexico State. Uh, I don't know. Look ahead, let down for New Mexico State. I don't know about that. Oh, no. James Madison at Coastal. Can Coastal, can James Madison stop the skid? <laughs> Which is a funny thing to say. Yeah, they lost one, one, game, one game, and then they, they get to go to Myrtle Beach. Hey, James Madison, if you don't get a bowl game, treat this trip to Coastal Carolina as the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Treat this as your Myrtle Beach Bowl. At 6 p.m., we have Florida State at Florida. Florida needs this to get a bowl. Florida State needs to win this to get in the playoff. Well, no, they still got to beat Louisville. But, I well I this if they lose this they, 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 even if they beat Louisville I don't think they get in the playoff no they, they gotta keep winning they would no longer control their own destiny that's for sure and they're playing without their quarterback yeah and so is Florida that's right there's no Graham Burtz is out yep uh call no, Oops, no quarterbacks Oops, no quarterbacks that's my, my favorite thing about that uh 1983 Oregon Oregon State thing that I talked about they both oh, were down to their third string quarterback. third string god in that monsoon. It was so great. On at the same time, in case you... Go ahead. So I feel like Florida State, Florida is going to go one of two ways, right? There's the way that we think it's all going to go, or we all think it's going to go, which is that yeah. Florida State is the obviously superior team and they they grind Florida into paste. But, like, I feel like there's a chance that this game just gets really stupid. I, was I, I, I don't think there's a world in which Florida blows out Florida State. I think there is no. a there is a timeline, however, where Florida makes this incredibly uncomfortable for four quarters and just refuses to play the kind of game Florida State wants and forces them to just be miserable. Like again, I, I may not be able to win this thing, but I'm gonna make your life hell for three hours. That's a good rival. You're gonna feel and you're gonna feel awful when you come out of here. And that's what I want to see in this game. Speaking of rivalries like that, Notre Dame at Stanford on the Pac-12 network. This is our send-off to the Pac-12 network. It's over. Oh, I bet Notre Dame is so mad that they're on the Pac-12 network. They are. They're, they're so, so mad. mad. They're furious. They're Can fat. I just give a, a quick salute to the Pac-12 network real quick? Yes. Because in Larry Scott's infinite wisdom, he did something very good. And I'm speaking for, um, I forget who it is, but one of our British friends in the uh, in the Discord who has pointed out that and in Canada as well in certain weeks, because the Pac-12 network does free streaming overseas, some weeks it is the only legal college football game you can watch in Canada or the UK. So maybe that made one Oregon State fan out in Vancouver, or maybe it made one Cal fan out in the UK, but a salute 
the Pac-12 Network. You were a bad idea, but it personally convenienced me. So thank you very much. I believe I did see on Twitter this week, though, that one of the British cable companies picked up a whole package of college football games. I believe Sky yeah. did. Yeah. Sky. Yeah. So, so Sky, call us Sky. Let us be. Mm-hmm. Let us be your guide to college football. We'll be I, your Martin Brundle. Yeah, that was, we'll do a grid look, walk. Look, I did a like a tweet. I was like, I can't wait to explain all these people like the Hawaii test, Maction, and the Fun Belt. And then I found out we had so many UK followers. We have, we have lots of UK I followers. I was so thrilled. I, I cannot believe it. I, I don't know how many listen to the podcast, but like. I, I, I've seen the map. Plenty yeah. do. I mean, it's amazing because, I mean, we're all up in like random like EFL League 2 shit. Like mm-hmm. like soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. I Just we're all <laughs> in that. You know, I mean, we're in that. I mean, in, in this podcast, we probably have a lot of premiership fans and 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 you kind of gotta between the two main ones you got a north north london derby in between us so the 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 wheel of winners i posted today the wheel of winners Um, and and shout out to grimsby town up there uh league my league two darling side note also i know we're not talking about the iron bowl but i would like to take a moment to shout out a guy that i found on twitter today okay who is a british guy who is an Auburn fan because the first college football game he ever watched was the 2013 Iron Bowl. And he is on his way to go to the Iron Bowl this year. Oh, dude. I love stuff like that. Like, God like I love French Ole Miss fan was great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. British Auburn fan. Hell yeah. There's also a British lady named D Ford who is now an Auburn fan because she kept getting tags and tweets for former Auburn defensive player D Ford. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I love when you can like you know, <laughs> like cross oceans and shit. I, I mean, we got a lot of podcast listeners out in Australia too, which is crazy. What if, guys, instead of me driving to Sam Houston's okay. Okay. on Saturday, all right? What if I just drive south to Baylor to watch West Virginia there? Beth, what if I lay? What if I watch West Virginia at Baylor with my own eyes? I mean, you've seen the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> turn away. Turn away from the Ark, Marion. Turn away. Yeah, don't, don't look. Don't don't look at it. Don't look at it. Why are we in prime time again? The look on Beth's face when you asked if you should go was like, hey, should I this mix pickle way. juice? Should I mix pickle juice with orange juice? And the, the look was, I am i can't stop oh, you. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a Canadian mimosa. Because y'all put fucking vinegar on everything. <laughs> You got pickles for Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, I can't give an I can't give a centimeter because you'll take a mile. All right, so let, let's see if I can pull this off. I'll tell the wife that we want to go see uh, Chip and Joanne's Magnolia. Yeah, right. And, and, but then, like, rope her into the West Virginia, uh, yeah, you know, Baylor right game. It's just right there. We're right here. Can we stay? We're right here. Yeah. You know, I mean, we could just get a hotel uh, for the night in Waco, and then we get some kolaches in the morning on the way home at the check stop, right? Uh, other direction. Kolaches other direction. Way. Okay, I, I don't know which way I was going. I'll but get I'll get the kolaches. I'll bring you You'll get the kolaches, and, and you'll meet us there. West Virginia, Baylor, uh, let's do it. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it. Char- Char- we should. Charlotte is South Florida. South Florida needs this. My favorite hate and ass rivalry in the world, guys, is Clemson at South Carolina. Oh, South Carolina no. needs this fist because this is real hate. This is mm-hmm. not pretend hate. Uh, my good friend Courtney, who provided me the fern at last March when I was getting drunk ass on this podcast, uh, she is a South. She went to South Carolina and was in the South Carolina band and had to be pulled away from fighting Clemson fans in the stands. <laughs> like that's just how this game goes. What instrument does she play? Learn it. Okay, that feels right. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, no, she's. She she was a she was clarinet section leader. Someone hit the some some of her kids and like she went mama bear mm-hmm. and about yeah. laid out someone. Yeah, clarinets secretly very fighty. Oh yeah, that's what happened to Squidward. Exactly. Can- Kansas is South Kansas is Cincinnati. My bad. It's also on at that same time. We also have Iowa State at Kansas State and North Carolina at North Carolina State on the ACC network. Again, that feels like a CW game. I don't know why not why we're not getting a CW doubleheader this week. I wish. As we get to the evening, the eight o'clock slate, Wyoming at Nevada. I had to. I'm sorry. Wyoming at Nevada should be a lot of a lot of fun. But then we also have Cal at UCLA at nine thirty. 
Cal needs this one to be bowl eligible. Can you get Chip Kelly fired, Cal? Can you do it? I like he just wins over USC, which is typically the last game of the year. Yep, but no, we're then not he, doing no, that this no, year. Then he's got to go back to the Rose Bowl, which would not necessarily be filled. And then and then Cal beats – Oski takes him out with the axe. The head the of – last Pac-12 regular season the game. The head of Joe Bruin. Yeah. Oski just looking like, mine is the last face you see before you die. <laughs> The many faces of Oski. I would like to break into Oski discussion to inform you that the reason that we do not have a CW header on Saturday is because at 8 p.m. a Walton's Thanksgiving is playing. Oh, you can't fuck with the Walton's Thanksgiving. Oh. You can't do that. And then our last game of the season, of the regular season, minus Army Navy. Also Fresno State at San Diego State. Oh, yeah, Fresno State. Thank you. We have Colorado State at Hawaii. Colorado State needs this one to be eligible. This is the perfect send-off to the season. It's wonderful. It kicks off at 10 p.m. Central. It'll go until 1 or 2. We'll get to watch crazy Hawaiian commercials together. And the season will uh, talk, be over. About, talk about the Detmer Darlings. So this is the two bra- the tale of two Bradens, right? Yes, the tale of two Bradens. The tale of two Bradens. We have... Both of the both the quarterbacks, uh, Braden Fowler and Nicol- Nicolosi at Colorado State, and Braden Shager at Hawaii, are third and fourth right now in our Detmer standings. Do you know who's number one right now? My man. That's EJ Warner at Temple. Right. Oh, he, he jumped up. So we need to see whether the Bradens can do this. Both Bradens are coming in with about the same number of interceptions, about fifteen apiece. So I just assume that the balls are going to be going all over the place and into hands they should not be in. Didn't mean that to sound so sexual, but it did. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm sad that this is a night game now. I understand the Hawaii test and everything, but I really wanted to make a Braden uh, brunch joke, and I can't. Mm. Well, if you think Mm. about the Sky Sports fans, uh, you know, the folks in the UK, this is actually brunch for them. There you go. Add all together. 10 p.m. And it's it's a little early for brunch over there. <laughs> British time? English breakfast. It's 4 a.m. It's a little early. By the time they wake <laughs> up, can you imagine waking up having a full a full English breakfast? A full English while Ooh. you're watching Kauai football at 4 a.m. Yeah, your day has started emphatically. <laughs> oh yeah, those be- those beans and toast feel so good. Yeah. Oh, boy. You get about five minutes of pure energy, and then it's nap time. Oh, mm-hmm. well, I mean, it's perfect. This is also the week of the Bayou Classic. Oh, yes. At at, at the, uh, I was going to call it the Sugar Dome. This, the Sugar Dome. <laughs> the Sugar Dome. <laughs> oh, Super Lord. Dome. Oh, Lord. This is Grambling and the lid, Southern. The lid of the Sugar Bowl. Say, baby. Grambling say, baby, and Southern. The, this say, is say baby, the Bayou Classic happening at the Sugar Dome. The Sugar Dome. <laughs> the Sugar Dome would be such a better name for it. <laughs> It used to be the Sugar Bowl was sponsored by like Domino Sugar, but like yeah. now, now it's like Allstate or some shit. I was so I was trying to I was. Trying, I liked it better when it was Nokia. Yeah, the, I was trying to Nokia find um, bring back it, the Tostito, Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. I mean that was the, the best one. That was right? the best one. Mm-hmm. I was trying to find. I, I'm partial with Popeyes Bahama Bowl. Okay, well I, mean, I was trying to find Domino's like on Amazon because I need some like some Domino's to play with. I, I don't have a set. I, Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. And I'll just put that in there. I went to Domino's, the Domino's category on Amazon, and the first six things were real Domino's. Thing seven was Domino Sugar. <laughs> it was like a pack of Domino Sugar. <laughs> sure. That's right. I mean, we also have too. our FCS play our FCS playoffs kicking off this week throughout all of this on Saturday. Oh yeah. So from like noon to four. So. At 12 a.m., Sacramento, 12 a.m., Jesus, 12 p.m., Sac State at North Dakota, 1 p.m., North Carolina Central at Richmond, which ought to be an amazing game. Oh, yeah. North Carolina, North Carolina Central has a good shot of making it out of the first round. Which shout, is out, shout out to them. Webster. The, Richmond's uh, ma- Richmond creepy mascot. mascot. Yes, yes. It's named Webster. It's, instead of Webster, it, like it's spelled U-R as oh, no, in oh, I, Richmond. I, I, got, oh. I, got you, I got you, boss. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I hate that. <laughs> I love it. Our, our beloved Lafayette Leopards are going to Delaware to face the Blue Hens. That's not fair. Gardner Webb at Mercer, Nichols at Southern Illinois, 
UT Chattanooga at Austin P. The governor. Drake and North Dakota State. Hey, Drake, Ew, a great season. Congratulations. Yeah, have fun with that. That's hey, cool. you know what? Ugh. Like, first time in the playoffs, like, a great run. We're real proud of y'all. Just go play with North Dakota State now. Into the wood chipper with you. Oh, yeah. Just, that's not, that's not and, nice. That's bullshit. A particularly vindictive wood chipper as well. Oh, oh, <laughs> a wood chipper with a chip on its shoulder, literally, at this point. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then uh, Duquesne, congrats on winning the NEC. You get to go to the Youngstown State and get penguin mauled. So uh, it's going to be adorable. Uh, yeah, they're real cute until they're not. Insert gif of penguin slapping pe- other penguin into ice water here. On this on this audio program, yes. Yeah, the- it, it, it's a notoriously yep. visual medium. Just yeah. put in like a slap sound effect does, and you can imagine. Does, do, does or, the NCAA... or like the penguin from the Batman. Oh, yes. There we go. That's right. Yeah, Danny DeVito. Does does the NCAA do like an FCS bracket challenge? I don't think so. Do, hmm. Like ESPN if or not, somebody do it? If, if anybody knows and you listen to this podcast, uh, if somebody like hosts something like that, because I know on the Sickos Committee basketball side, uh, NIT Stu, uh, he does like an NIT bracket challenge uh, mm-hmm. through like a Google form or something like that. But if anybody does something like that for the FCS playoffs, uh, and you want us to promote it or something, please reach out to us. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, throw you a quote tweet, a quote tweet, retweet. Uh, hell, I want to do it myself uh, because I am curious. I, I don't even know if I can build it. If I have enough time, I'll try. But yeah, I'd be interested in doing like an FCS playoff, which would be fun. Also, just to mention on D2, our beloved Colorado School of Mines are playing Augustana, Augustina, Augustana, uh, South Dakota. Augustana. That one. And uh, the first round was very chalky in D two. All the all the C teams won except in one bracket where Texas Permian Basin, who's done so well, had the big wins this year. They lost in the first round to Bemidji State, hmm. and Western hmm. Colorado lost to un- unranked Central Washington. And then let me find the D three update real fast. Uh, this week, the well, first off, so it's it's interesting to see people's predictions, like according to. Uh, formulas and whatever yeah. and north central out of illinois is the by far the biggest favorite in the d3 bracket they're taking on texas trinity uh, mount union's playing ithaca john hopkins is playing union out of new york which is a good should be a good matchup wartburg is playing whitworth wheaton wisconsin whitewater and a bunch of others so there's all sorts of fun stuff throughout the entire day as well uh you'll be able to find the d3 games streaming probably on their local sites the d2 games stream on their local sites as well all the fs games are on espn and y'all, I think that's it. Anything else for the good of the order? No, I just uh, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, enjoy your 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 Canadian pickles for Thanksgiving. Canadian we appreciate pickles. it. If I've inspired anyone, if, I mean, you know, I, again, but uh, thank you so much. Just in, enjoy the holiday. You know, have a good time, and 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 I'll probably be speaking Cajun uh, on the next podcast. <laughs> So I hope we for, should end. Li- I uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Beth. No, no, no. Go ahead. I was just like, well, I mean, you know, I hope for. I uh, hope everybody is looking uh, and and has a lot of anticipation <laughs> for the next podcast. We should end like the CW. Good night, Jordan. Good night, Pick Girl. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, John. Good night, Boy. Mish. <laughs> Good night, John. <laughs> Thanks for renaming me, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we got to cut it right there.